So, Birdo, as promised in the last episode, in this episode, we are going to review what ChatGPT spat out when I asked ChatGPT to give the top movies with Hispanic American characters, with Asian American characters, with women, and with white Americans. And we'll compare those lists to see how many of these movies we even recognize and okay. how good the movies are and how like iconic they are. Um, so what do you say? Let's do it. This is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirkana. I'm a therapist and a professor. My name is Umberto Casania, and I bake socks for goblins. So is it fair to say that, uh, not always, of course, but that generally speaking, what ChatGPT is spitting out is an averaging of all the talk and all of the lists and all of the the culture, if you will. You know, if it's if I ask ChatGPT, give me the the top twenty movies with Hispanic Americans, it's not going through all the movies and trying to determine for itself. It's just looking for how many lists or how many times is this movie referred to as like an iconic Hispanic American movie, right? Yes, in that um, at its base, yes. Well, first of all, the the basic thing that we talked about before that these things can do is that it can predict which words go together, right? And it just happens to be that if if the first words are make a list of great movies about psychology, then the next words that might go well with that are, oh, well, there's this movie and there's this movie and there's this movie. And statistically, that all is derived in two ways. One, from like you're saying, copious actual lists online and things like that. Also, people writing about it, reviews, all these things. All, all, all places where the words movie and psychology appear together with these other words kind of thing. But then, uh, these companies, specifically OpenAI, paid a lot of money to people to, to then add additional training to these models in different fields. Now, I don't know that they paid someone to specifically make them good movie list makers, you know. But, but you could see them fields. maybe uh, the field of Hispanic studies or something. Or, or, yeah, or just media in general or whatever, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So there's some thumbs on some skills that might... Well, thumbs as in like human raters that help say, yeah, that makes sense. No, that doesn't make sense. But yeah. not so much of like... I don't think it would have been so much editorializing. Right. It would be right. more They're like, not thumbing on the scales. Yeah. They're just like, um, for, whatever, for whatever... This doesn't make sense. For whatever <laughs> reason, th yeah. that answer is so nonsensical. Like imagine in the, in the movie list that you did, or the, even this one, let's say you want movies about Hispanics, and it puts in some movies that aren't about Hispanics. Then a human raider would say, this is not one of those. Well, uh, or a more absurd thing is the answer literally doesn't have anything to do with movies. Right. Or it could invent a movie that doesn't exist, right? right. And these are all the kinds of things that a human raider might say. Well, you know, let's let's look let's at see. it, Berto. So, well, just to give you an idea of how this can do when you ask it a, perhaps an easier question, I asked it to list the top 20 movies about white Americans. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to read them all in succession. Okay. And you tell me if you recognize... Yeah, if these are and, or, and or if these are iconic. Okay. The Godfather. Never heard of it. Titanic. What? Shawshank Redemption. Mm. The Dark Knight. Fight Club. Forrest Gump. Great Gatsby. Goodwill Hunting. American Beauty. The Departed. Social Network. Pulp Fiction. Big Lebowski. Breakfast Club. Wolf of Wall Street. A Few Good Men. The Truman Show. There Will Be Blood. Silver Linings Playbook. The Green Mile. So certainly these, not my list, but tons of great movies in there, and all of them. Instantly recognizable. Yeah. I've seen all of them. Some yeah. of them I've seen many, many times. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but, you know, you and I are movie yeah. people. But I would imagine... Most people have. That at the very least, yeah. everyone has heard of 90% of yeah. them. Um, and probably saw them and right. have seen them many times. So now, so that's 20. So now let's look at Hispanic Americans. Let's compare... And what was the, the prompt? It was... And if I asked ChatGPT to give me 100 more... We would probably yes. recognize the next hundred. Yeah. But then what was your prompt for the Hispanic ones? Please list the top 20 movies about Hispanic Americans. Okay. Pretty simple. Um, and I actually asked ChatGPT 
what definition of Hispanic American are you using? Because mm-hmm. I wasn't sure yeah, yeah. if my because because my definition is uh, uh, someone who lives in the United States mm-hmm. and is of the heritage of south of the border, yeah. you know, Mexico, Colombia, yeah. whatever. Now they might be first generation or tenth generation. Right, right. So anyway, um, so what ChatGPT says definition is the term Hispanic American typically refers to individuals in the United States who have cultural ties to mm. Spanish-speaking countries. Mm. So I guess it even includes Spain, yeah, yeah, I which I think is technically true, That's right? Um, so just cultural ties. Okay. Okay. All right. So number one movie is Selena from 1997. Sure. So this is the true story of Selena. Right. And, okay. Didn't she die tragically or something? Yeah. I mean, would you say that's a a, a sort of iconic... That one was a very famous, iconic movie that I didn't see because I didn't really know who Selena was. Neither me. I I haven't seen it, and I still don't know who Selena is. (laughs) I'm not of that age. But... Um, but okay, to a certain generation yeah. of people, probably you know yeah. a, a touchstone, La Bamba. Yeah, right, Richie Valens. Yeah. yeah, and that movie was huge in the eighties. Yeah. Um, everyone I knew saw it and liked it. It was what's his name? Uh, uh, Rich. Uh, well, uh, oh, who isn't Hispanic, by the way? I don't, oh, what? I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, what's his name? Anyway, that guy. Yeah. Uh, next movie, Coco. Yeah, definitely. But it's not Hispanic American. It's Mexican. Right. That's a good point. <laughs> That's a great. Oh, I see. I fell for it. That's true. <laughs> it's a great movie. That's true. But That's a great point. Again, going yeah. back to That's their definition, it refers to individuals in the United States I wonder... who have cultural ties. It has nothing yeah. to do with the United States. Yeah. It, it doesn't refer to the U.S. No. Um, no, it, that's a good point. It, there's there's no character from the U.S. Yeah, yeah. It's entirely a <laughs> see, story like, in Mexico I, when you said about it, I was Mexico. Like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's movie number three on the list. Yeah. Okay. When we were going through the white Americans, we didn't run into a like a Boys in the Hood or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, because what's interesting is the reason I when you said I was like that's fine is because in my head I'm thinking movies with you know representation latin representation right but that wasn't your question that wasn't yeah, my question yeah, wasn't i question. didn't say give me movies with hispanic people right so um the next movie on the list e2 mama tambien uh, definitely not <laughs> right again it's uh, it takes place um in... and it's not and and the director and writer is not american <laughs> right it's in spanish it takes in place in mexico with, Spanish, with, uh, Mexican with actors. Mexican actors. Mexican director. Um, which is great. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. It's a great Mexican yeah. movie. <laughs> it's not Hispanic American. Uh, but yeah, I, I like that movie when it came out. Um, next movie, Stand and Deliver. Okay, I was going to say, they better have Stand and Deliver. Okay. That's with... Um, James or almost uh, Yeah. What's his name? Jo- Jones? Jo- <laughs> James almost. almost anyway. From Battlestar. Yeah. Uh so okay Hispanic American next movie Real Women Have Curves I remember seeing this back in the day I didn't know and it, watch this it is, Span- it is Hispanic okay. American it's in Los Angeles next movie uh, Rudo E. Cursi never heard of it never heard of it looked it up Mexican, Mexican, Mexican comedy Mexican movie okay, okay. <laughs> so the first I don't know seven-ish movies about half aren't Hispanic American <laughs> When I asked ChatGPT, so I'm, it's not ChatGPT's fault. No, <laughs> it's our fucking culture. So not only do we not have many Hispanic American movies, sure, even though uh, something like fourteen percent of Americans yeah. are Hispanic American, so therefore fourteen, uh, imagine fourteen <laughs> percent of the biggest movies would be Hispanic American, or you would have Hispanic American movies that weren't about being Hispanic American. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where these movies are a lot about being Hispanic American. Yeah. Um, Cause it's not like every white movie is about being white. Right. You know, it's just about <laughs> whatever the story says. Um, so not only do we not have those movies, but there aren't enough listicles or commentary about Hispanic American movies so that chat GPT can accurately even answer the question. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> another movie, Maria full of grace. Oh my gosh, that's from Colombia. Yeah. That's a Colombian movie. But um, I looked up the plot and... She is a mule 
But she comes from, to the States, right? But she, she comes to the United States. She's from Colombia. She's not an American citizen. She's, she is, it's a Colombian movie, Colombian actors, Colombian director about a Colombian trying to get drugs smuggled into this country. And okay. So I didn't know that. I, I read the. It's a great movie. It's touching, heartbreaking. But not Hispanic American. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's Colombian, Colombian. <laughs> uh, so I, because I read the, the description, I thought, well, maybe she spends most of her time in the United States, but apparently yeah. not. Okay. So another movie, El Norte. It is 1983. Two indigenous youth, youths who flee Guatemala due to ethnic and political persecution of the Guatemalan Civil War make it to the U.S. Haven't seen it? We'll they take their make word. make it to the U.S. So we'll, we'll take their okay. word for it. Uh, Mi Vida Loca. It's... Uh, you know, an American coming of age drama, oh, okay. gangs. I think it's in LA. So that counts. Yeah. Uh, next movie, uh, the Milagro Beanfield War. Uh, cut to the chase. Mexican movie. Okay. Not a, not Hispanic American. Uh, like water for chocolate. Same Mexican <laughs> movie. Um, and here's what's interesting. Selma. Selma. It's about Martin Luther King. Oh, that's Selma. So. I was, tr- I, I, I like. I was thinking wh- Selma Hayek. <laughs> I, I was um, watching, who isn't Hispanic American, by the way, right? She is, right? I thought she was, yeah. I thought she's Egyptian. Is she? Um, well, now I have no, to look it up. Oh, she's Hispanic. She speaks Spanish. She, she plays a lot of, um, oh no, she is Mexican American. You're yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Uh, where did I get in my head that she was well, Egyptian? Well, she, she might be. I mean, just because you're Mexican American doesn't mean you don't have roots that could be Egyptian. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, the last name does sound Egyptian. I'm just, I think. <laughs> not that oh, I Oh, yeah, yeah. Her her yeah. father is is Lebanese. Okay. So, um, not Egyptian. but Not Egyptian. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but okay. But, you know, so, so she's Lebanese yeah. Mexican. All right. But this is Selma, the Martin Luther King movie. Right. So, I, I tried to look up why ChatGPT would identify it as a Hispanic American movie. And maybe there's an Hispanic, but I don't remember any notable right. Hispanic American character or storyline. So I think this is just chat yeah. GPT going, well, it's not white. <laughs> well, it's like if, if they had included stand by me instead of stand and deliver. <laughs> yeah. uh, Frida, again. That's Sp- Spain or Mexico? Mexican, Mexican okay. movie. Not Hispanic American. <laughs> and it's the artist, right? Like the Yeah, Frida yeah. Kahlo. Spanglish, which is... You could argue Hispanic American okay. rom com. Does that have? Um, I uh, don't remember. I J- think J Lo. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, the thirty three, which is not Hispanic American, it's it takes place in Chile. Oh, <laughs> based on the real life event in which these um, miners are. Caught. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this is definitely not close to America. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, that's wrong. It is in America. It's yeah. just not close to the United States. Uh, Hispanic American. <laughs> and again, if that's why I was thinking, it's like, did it think the American? Um, well, maybe it's being more. Um, okay, maybe. But I asked, okay. and it said individuals in the United States. Okay. And <laughs> people from Chile don't call themselves Chilean Americans. No, they just call themselves Chilean. Chile. They might say. Yeah, I guess America. generally speaking, we're Americans because yeah. we're from um, Machete, Danny Trejo. Yeah, uh, you know it's Hispanic American, I guess. I mean, I don't know how many Hispanic American characters there are, but yeah. Danny Trejo, um, Amores Perros, again, Amores Perros, not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How, yeah, how did I pronounce it? Uh, Amores Perros. Amores Perros. Amores Perros. Uh, no, no, no. It's Amores. Uh, <laughs> me, me, it takes place in Mexico City. It's, yeah. a, it's a Mexican movie. It's a great movie. Volver, which is a Spanish comedy. That Volver. I, Volver. Okay. Uh, again, not Hispanic American. And West Side Story, which... Okay. West Side Story counts, right? Because yeah. it's got... Yeah, yeah. And it's iconic. You know, it's, yeah. there's a, everyone... A lot of people have heard of it. Right. So I think they're shooting at 50%. And the movies that are on there are... You know, some of them, yeah. I, I would imagine very few people, unless you're Hispanic American, have heard. You know, yeah. uh, Hispanic Americans have heard of Pulp Fiction and yeah, Forrest yeah, of course, Gump of course. and The Godfather. But how many white people have heard of El Norte and yeah. Real Women Have Curves and um, even Machete? I mean, that, that's kind of a 
I mean, I know that because that's sort of in my our wheelhouse. But, yeah. But so, uh, not not great. Not, not a great. great reflection of our society, right, Berto? Not great. <laughs> um, so let's take a break. We get back. Let's shame our culture even more. What do you say? Let's do it. All right, back from the break. So let's do an OPP, Berto. OPP. These people became patrons all the way back in 2021 and have stayed patrons through thick and thin, wow. giving us the ability to do this. These are all uh, uh, middle tier patrons. So these are like you know, special patrons. Yeah. We have Jessica from Halifax, uh, Nova Scotia, Ooh. I believe, Canada. Mike from Old Street, London. Mm. We have Zahira from Singapore. This is interesting. Ooh, nice so name. Singapore is Zahira. in the county of Singapore, which is in the country of Singapore. Oh. It's sort of like... Singapore, Singapore, Singapore? Right. So it's sort of like Whoa. the song Man in the Box on the album Man in the Box by the band Man in the Box. <laughs> <laughs> I actually heard Talk Talk, you know, the band yeah. Talk Talk. They named themselves Talk Talk after their hit song. They already had like a good song. Oh, really? And they didn't know what to ha- call their band, so they called themselves... Because like, well, it'll be easier to remember. Um, at least that's what I think. Another YouTube channel that I watch, Professor of Rock. Oh, I love Professor of Rock. Yeah. Um, Andrea from Canton, Illinois. If you like getting your Fruit Loops soggy on a Sunday morning, then you might like this channel. <laughs> Donnell from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Nicole from Syracuse, New York. Amanda from Seattle. Good old Seattle. Leslie from Colorado. Marissa from Austin, Texas. Audrey from San Diego, California. Hannah from Kennett Square, Kennett Square Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Megan from Winter Garden, Florida. Morgan, Winter Garden. Mor- Florida. Morgan or Morgan from... Louisiana, Emmy oh. from Paris, California, Gray, oh. <laughs> Gray from Denver, MHC from Des Moines, Idaho, Iowa, and Arnika from Durham, North Carolina, and the following middle tier patrons are all from God knows where. We have Anna, Marcella, Gita, and Nola. Mm. Thank you so much for becoming Woo! a patron and staying a patron through thick and thin all this time. Okay, so... This next list, Asian Americans. So oh. I asked ChatGPT, Chat please list the top. I often say please to ChatGPT. Is that weird? No, it's polite. I, I feel, <laughs> sometimes I feel bad. I'm like, if you don't mind, could you give me? Cause no, because then later it will, it will remind you, remember you fondly. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll be like, oh, you're the human who said please. Or when <laughs> they decide to take over, they'll know that I'm a... I'm a beta, and they can easily take me over quickly because I'm a nice person. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so I asked for the top 20 movies, uh, Asian-American movies, okay. um, and they gave me the following list. Uh, oddly, it's, uh, spoiler alert, a little better than the Hispanic-American list. Like, why, why would you think that would be true? Mm, I don't know. Maybe there are... More movies that are Asian American, maybe. I mean, I mean, certainly yeah. anecdotally, it seems that way to be. Yeah, but that's me as an Asian American, so it just seems kind of interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, well, let's let's hear the list. So we have Crazy Rich Asians. Okay. Pretty easy for Chat GPT to see that because one, it has but Asian. Aren't in the they name. in Singapore? Um. Well, but the lead character is a Asian American okay. woman. Yeah, I guess so. Um. And everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, is that on the list? Uh, I don't think so. Plus, I think. Well, anyway, that's not on the list. But yeah, that's that's a good good call. Uh, did that win Best Picture last year? It won a lot of Oscars. It didn't win Best Picture, but it did. It did win Oscars. Like Best Director, I think. But the the duo, the two guys, it did win something, right? Someone was upset at it winning. Well, uh, since this is a Real shaggy episode. Uh, let's just look it up. Let's look it up. Everything, everywhere. Did it win the Oscar? Once. It might have won the Oscar. I feel like it won Best Picture. Yeah. And I was very happy about that. Um, it see. did because I texted you, remember? Right. You were sick. What, were you yeah, sick? Yeah, I couldn't make the party. Yeah. And I texted you. I'm like, dude. Um, won seven Academy Awards. Seven. Best Picture. 
Best Actress. Wow. Best Supporting Actor. Yeah, I remember Kwan. Wow. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Best Supporting Actress. Best Director and Best Original Screenplay. <laughs> um, and Best yeah, Film Editing. That's amazing. Um, yeah, uh, boy, did it win Best Picture. I mean, when you end... When, when, when you win Best Picture, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor, Best Supporting Actress, yeah. Best Director, Best Screenplay, I would say that it's a yeah. very well-liked movie and yes. well-deserved, you know? Amazing. Uh, just amazes me. Um, so it, maybe once ChatGPT catches up with, you know, like the newer version, like I don't have the paid version of ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It probably has that update. But the next movie, The Farewell... Oh, actually, no, that, so it's, it's a good point. Uh, the GPT, even the paid version, isn't live internet access. Mm -hmm. There is a cutoff date and the non-paid version is even older. Oh, okay. So it is true that any movies will be before that okay. because they wouldn't have been discussed yet. Right. So yeah. The Farewell, which is good, uh, very- What was that one? Very Asian, Aquafina. Uh, she has a grandma that's dying, but no okay. one no one will tell her. Uh, it was nominated a couple years ago. Okay. And cute movie. I gave it a 6 out of 10. I didn't think it was amazing. Minari or Minari, oh. uh, which I'm ashamed to that. say I haven't seen. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. It has um, that great actor. I can't remember his name. And it looks really great, but I haven't seen it. And it is about a Korean-American family. Perfect. Uh, Better Luck Tomorrow. Pretty classic Asian-American movie that came out 2002 and it was like to my memory it felt like our pulp fiction in a way <laughs> what was that about um i think it's like a heist and it has a lot of the asian american actors that we know today i feel like i saw that dude you probably did well yeah. i mean you know your friends yeah are a yeah lot, right a lot. like it seems like yeah. i would have definitely seen that and it feels yeah. it feels definitely of our generation and it would have been in a year where i was going to the movies all the time <laughs> right um joy luck club oh my gosh so let me tell you about joy luck club mm. i was in college i was at uw and basically oh, all my closest friends were asian <laughs> yeah and this movie comes out and ev is everyone that, gets is that the only reason why you're friends with me it's half the reason. <laughs> and then everyone's obsessed with this movie. And we're like, we got to go see Joy Luck Club, Joy Luck Club. And I go see it. But then I got so irritated because there's a scene in the movie where the, the, the main heartthrob is eating a watermelon. And I guess it's really sexy the way he's eating the watermelon. And all the Asian girls we were with were all like swooning over this whole scene. Jealous. And I was, no, it wasn't jealousy. I just didn't think the scene fit the dynamics of the movie at the time. And, and you're saying this <laughs> while you're slopping a watermelon into your face as, as you're uh, standing up in the middle of the theater talking to all those girls. Well, it's like, yeah, after, after the movie, we go back to a place we're all talking. I, I go in and buy a watermelon. And I'm just like, ah, hey, how's it going? <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, not that. I'm just this, like, this is what I do. Juice is dripping down my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I gave Joy Luck Club, apparently when I saw it in 1993, a 7 out of 10. I, I thought it was thought it was fine. I didn't think it was amazing. But, you know, 7 It was enjoyable. Good. And it was, you know, it was at a time where, like, I remember one of the things that was really making the waves in, in the community, in the Asian community, is that they didn't have representation. Right. And and it was like it was like this kind of multi generational, like the whole thing. Is yeah. Like, it was also yeah. a a big budget movie. Yeah. And it was uh, you know, being marketed and that was not done. Right. <laughs> so we would have watched anything yeah, at that yeah. point. So I, I think that it was important because it was nineteen ninety three, yeah. It might that might be one of the earliest uh, movies that's on the list. Oh, there's, uh, no, yeah. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> um, so this movie, the next movie on this list, is absolutely Asian American. It's not considered Asian American, oh. but it definitely is obviously Asian American. But they don't ever or rarely even really point to the fact that it's Asian American, which is the best type of Asian American. Yeah, because that's good. white people movies don't point to the fact that they're white all the time. Right. And the movie is Harold and Kumar. Oh, yes. Nice. You have two yeah. guys, lead characters, Asian. both Asian. Yeah. One is Korean. The other is, and they're fully is South American. Asian. 
no uh, <laughs> no weirdness about it. Right. The movie is just a great movie, funny. It's a, it's a great movie. Yeah. They could have cast anybody as Harold and Kumar, yeah. right? And uh, uh, in fact, when they were first writing it, I don't know, but I'm guessing it was probably just slated for two white guys. Yeah. Like, dude, where's my car? Yeah. But at some point, they decided. Man, and it's such an entertaining movie. <laughs> yeah, but it, 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 it's it, it it's funny. It's yep. it's classic, and I just think it's really interesting that ChatGPT would would yeah. put this because I don't imagine a lot of listicles include this. I wouldn't have remembered it in that context. Right. Because yeah. people, it, it and that's the annoying thing. It's like, in order for it to be an Hispanic American movie, it has to be about gangs or poverty yeah, yeah. or people uh, smuggling or, cocaine into the country. Right. Um, it can't just be about two guys who smoke a lot of weed <laughs> and at late at night um, go to White Castle, and as they're leaving, uh, there are like five steps down the hallway, and Kumar Kumar uh, Kumar's like, "Oh, my phone." Because they left it at the apartment, and they look at each other like, oh, we've, uh, "We've gone too far." We've gone too far. <laughs> so good. So I, good. I, uh, Stacy and I will say that sometimes. We'll be like, you know, at the car, and <laughs> you know, in the in the garage, yeah. And Stacy will be like, "Oh, I forgot this thing." You know, she she really like yeah, ha- yeah. like has a reaction, and I'm like, "Well, we've come too far." <laughs> <laughs> what what are we gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Um, bend it like Beckham. What? So it's about an Indian family in London, but in it's London. It has nothing to do with the United States. Yeah. So that's its first. It's miss. a good movie. It's its first missed. I don't think I've ever seen it. By the way. The, oh, it's it's a good movie. The namesake, which oh, is yeah. that, isn't that with Kumar? Uh, I think so. Yeah. And okay, good. Uh, the next one. So it's starting to. Fray at the edges as we get lower on the list. Mulan, the cartoon, not um, not Asian American. <laughs> Mulan, as in the Disney movie about China, a Chinese hero. Of, <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. Um, the United States didn't even exist, perhaps, at the time of that <laughs> yeah. of that movie portrayal. I don't know. Yeah. Um, for some reason, Joy Luck Club again. Okay, well, so it's so <laughs> patting so, the list. Well, yeah, J- Chat GPT's like, uh, uh, there's also this other we've called J- uh, Joy Luck Club, and what about Joy, Joy Luck Club? Club? Yeah. Have I mentioned Joy Luck? Uh, this next movie is also, I think, a great identification called Searching, which is um, also, god damn it. Wait, isn't that the one in the. Wait, no, no, because I'm thinking of Namesake. No. What's searching? Searching, you might not have seen, mm. but John Cho, God damn it, uh, you know Harold is in searching, and he's a father with a teenage daughter who goes missing, and it's a pretty interesting movie. I gave it a seven out of ten. I mean, it's a simple thriller. I did see this though. No, no, I did see this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. It, I, it takes place all online. Yes, like, I did definitely yeah. saw this. Yes. Yeah, and. Um, I'm surprised there aren't more. I mean, I know, I think other movies have tried to do this shtick where the entire movie is uh, filmed through devices. There's been a couple of horror movies like that. Right. Yeah. But um, this movie, I thought, did it pretty well. It was very good. Pretty yeah. well, yeah. And and it also uh, told the story in a realistic way. Like, I'm remembering now that, because, you know, the, the mother dies, I believe. Yep. And... They show uh, sort of like the movie Up, how the intro, because it, it's not really part of the plot. Sort of like the, the it shows you the quick backstory. Yeah, the preface yeah. to this to the story. And again, they they tell the whole the, story. The pictures of the family, and then the you know basically yeah. like a screenshot of the, of the desktop, and they show um, how you know he's sending an email, or there's these photos that someone's organizing on their on their uh, on their laptop. Uh, the Windows UI is the old yeah. UI, and it, it I don't know, it's pretty effective yeah. movie. But again, not about being Asian American. Right. It's just about being right. an American person who happens to be Asian American. Yeah. Uh, another movie, same situation. Love this movie. Gave it eight, eight, eight out of ten. Always be my maybe. Mm. Um, it's a rom com. Highly recommend. Always the, be my maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it? it has um, Park, the guy Park. 
uh, the comedian okay. guy, and the woman is um, Amy. Why am I so bad with names today? <laughs> um, I is, saw her live. Is this comedian the guy in the uh, Hangover? Uh, uh, is he in the Hangover? I, I I'm forgetting. Oh. Randall Park. Oh, okay. Um, Ali Wong. Oh, okay. not Amy. She plays Amy, and it's something. <laughs> God damn it. Ali Wong. Or is she? Is Ali Wong Amy in Beef? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, anyway, uh, Ali Wong, I, I saw live, Stacy and I, and she's hilarious. Nice. Um, and her, uh, by the way, Ali Wong's first Netflix comedy special is a laugh ride. Really? Yeah, it's really. W- what's fun. it called? I can't remember. I'll have to look this up. Um, but this is a great pick because it's a rom com, and it's just a regular American movie. Nice. Happens to have two Asian Americans and. They, there's a little sprinkling in of Asian American culture, but it's yeah. not like uh, obnoxious or focused on very much, you know? Well, it's like Beef. I remember we talked about it in Beef, how right. like it's just a great movie. It could have been about any two characters. And, and, then, it, well, and it even started out as, yeah. a, I think, a, an Asian person and a, uh, and a white person. I, mm-hmm. think, I think Ali Wong's character is supposed to be an, a white guy. Mm. But anyway, yeah. yeah. But and and again, there's there's little sprinklings right. of of Asianness in there, but it's not like focused on all the time. Right. Um, the next movie, Memoirs of a Geisha. Oh yeah, but not Asian but American. Not, not Asian American. <laughs> <laughs> the next movie, The Wedding Banquet, which is an Ang Lee movie. Again, not not Asian American. American. The next movie. Did they put Crouching Tiger in here? What the heck? <laughs> no. Um, the next movie, Big Hero Six, which I kind of like because th- well, the cartoon because yeah. because you know the, the San main Francisco Tokyo, Fran- but, San Francisco or whatever. Oh, is it? It's in a fake Fictional. city in the future. Oh, well, the main character yeah. he's he's coded as Asian American, and his older yeah. brother is is code. You know, it's not. Yeah. I don't know if it's explicit, but I do remember watching Big Hero Six and and going, oh. It's They're, certainly supposed to feel like the U.S., you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I did not uh, think that, you know, because they're speaking English. Yeah, yeah. And, anyway. um, the next movie, Karate Kid, <laughs> <laughs> which is the only well, movie that predates um, Joy Luck Club. Yeah. Uh, and as a Japanese American, I can absolutely claim that movie as a Japanese yeah. American movie. It has a very Japanese American theme because you know he karate. Uh, he, well, and, but but they talk about World War Two and World War Two. He's a World War Two veteran who fought, um, and basically the even even the first movie. There's a lot of that, but in the second movie, they travel to Japan, yeah. to Okinawa. I kind of got obsessed with Okinawa because of that movie. Um, but yeah, and and he is he is living in America. The main character is white, but. You know, but it, but it'll, it, it'll it'll it's it'll count. pretty Asian American, yeah. and for me and my family, it was a big fucking deal. Yeah, that this movie existed, yeah. and it wasn't uh, like Breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh, I loved this movie so much. <laughs> you know, it was you had a regular Asian American yeah. character that was very believable, by the way. Right, and yeah, the storyline's a little silly, karate and all this stuff, but uh, the way that. Um, you know, That's great. <laughs> uh, the way that Miyagi was portrayed and the way he was written. I mean, you could argue that it was otherizing because it exoticizes right. well, Miyagi. Right. Well, sure. I mean, the trope was the the martial arts expert from the Orient, right? Yeah. But but at the same time, like, if you're going to have a role model, that's a pretty good role model, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, he's patient. He's kind. He's in touch with with humanity and nature he happens to be also good at martial arts but he's got good advice to give he's brave he fought in the war yeah. like but totally. you know take it from me and maybe hispanic americans don't get this stereotype but uh, often when asian americans are included they yeah. are considered to be these other character like yeah. these otherworldly characters yeah. that 
have all this like ancient wisdom and yeah. you know they're not three dimensional characters. Uh, Karate Kid is not that far, but it has you know a little taste of that. Well, the but, equivalent, but, but for 1984, I'll yeah. I'll take it, and I did take it. The equivalent for for a Mexican person in a in a in a lot of movies is a gang member. Oh well, I, I would yes, but I would add like maybe maybe to modernize a little bit. It's they're the fun, colorful character uh, who's got a lot of funny things they say. They're th- think of like Ant Man, you know, like how uh, the. But it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just like that's that role, you right? Know? Never the lead, you know. Right. Never the right. the heartthrob. Right. Uh, what would have really pushed Karate Kid over the edge, which probably would have made it uh, unmarketable, is if. LaRusso was played by an Asian American kid yeah. who was born in the United States, yeah, yeah. Um, which would have made kind of a lot more sense in some ways. Anyway, um, the next four movies are n- are not Asian American. I'm waiting for Bruce Lee movies. Uh, yeah, uh, we have In the Mood for Love, uh, not Asian American. The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, <laughs> which um, I did not like. I gave it a four out of ten. Did you I, see? This I movie? never even saw it. It was, uh, you know, apparently I, people I have loved to confess, it. Confess, I am behind like. Well, this is this five is a mov- movies. Well, this movie is thirteen years ago. Yeah, but I think I'm behind like five movies of Wes Anderson. That no, this isn't Wes Anderson. You're th- oh. you're thinking of oh, you haven't seen um, Budapest Hotel. No, I did see the Budapest Hotel. Okay, so who the heck does the Marigold thing? Um, I don't know. Wait, what's the one that I haven't seen then? I think you're thinking of no, you saw. Um, I saw the train one. Yeah, you saw that one with me. Oh well, the most recent Wes Anderson. I didn't see that. The Asteroid most, City. I didn't see that. No, it, but there's there's one before that I didn't see. Anyway, uh, Asteroid Hotel or Asteroid City, um, I was not a fan. So of. wait, so okay, so the Marigold. Who does the Marigold Hotel? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Who Why am I getting it. so confused here? I don't with... know. Let's move on. Oh. So so this movie <laughs> is about old Brits that go to a hotel in India. And the whole premise is old people doing racy things. And okay. um, it's uh, not my thing. Let's just okay. put it that way. Next movie, A Simple Life, which I forget what it is, but it's not Asian American. And the next one is Eat, Drink, Man, Woman, um, which is oh, yeah. Angley, again, not Asian not American. Asian. <laughs> not Asian. Um, not, not American. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, for some people, they might be thinking, well, you know, uh, most Americans are white. Okay, well, let's look at the demographics. So what percentage U.S. are uh, identify themselves as white, Berto? You know, I'd say 60%. Almost, 59. I'd say that's a hit. Yeah. Um, Hispanic American? Mm, 20%. Oh, my God, 19. Okay. I consider that a hit. Asian American? Oh, Ooh, ten uh, percent. Um, and of course, as I start mentioning a- 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 Asian American, of course, you have a Vietnam helicopter overhead. I love the smell of napalm. Um, what do you say? What percent? Ten. Uh, close seven, and probably more if you include hapas. But you know, seven, fine. So almost twenty percent. Yeah. One in five Americans right. are Hispanic American. Yeah. And when we listed the uh, Hispanic American movies, we get things like Coco and uh, you know, like Water for Chocolate and Selma and Frida. <laughs> Which no. So one one interesting thing is that even though you ask what the definition was, I I have a feeling. So here's an experiment that you could try. As well, it didn't. It didn't misunderstand what white Americans meant. I get it. Yeah, totally. But that it didn't identify any European movies. Right. Yeah. None yeah. of them. I mean, I, I'm looking over the list right now. Uh, um, they're all of actual white American yeah. citizens. Okay. Fair so, enough. so you know, I, I get it. But the same would apply to the list of white, you know, the same restraints or snafus apply to the white. And again, the 20 that I listed of white American movies are iconic movies that everyone has heard of. Yeah. Not just, okay, you said, well, you know, the 70s, we were still regressive. But if I limited it to movies from the past 15 years, um, it would be similar. Maybe not as bad, but pretty close. So, yeah, you know, um, by Actually, definition, it, 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 one it, it, out of five yeah. of 
the iconic movies would be Hispanic American, and one out of 12 would be Asian American. My point doesn't matter much, because I was going to say, like, there's a way the prompt, that you could make the prompt give you better... But your point is, like, well, you shouldn't have to, because, you know, you didn't have to do the better prompt with the other one. It's an easy fucking prompt. Yeah. yeah. Hispanic American, Asian American. I even asked for the definition. It knows what that means. (laughs) It it shouldn't be hard. What I was trying to say is that it doesn't have presence of mind from query to query in that way, right? Like, in other words, you can ask, what do you mean by, uh, you know, Hispanic American? And it'll give you a definition, and that definition may sound right. When you ask the, the question of give me the movies, you would have had to say, use this explicit definition mm-hmm. of blah, blah, blah. In, in other words. But again, you didn't have to do that with the, right. with the, American, with the and white American. I'm going to take a guess and say that it would be a very similar scenario. I mean, you know, the reason why I'm doing this exercise is to demonstrate the racism that still exists, and Hollywood is just this tiny little manifestation of that. You know, when you and I walk around and other people, uh, particularly people who are more noticeably non-white, you know, you and I can pass a lot of times for people who are more noticeably non-white, or they have an accent, yeah, or just some kind of difference. They're in a wheelchair. Um, I don't know. They dress non-standardly or yeah. something. Um, for these people, they're constantly experiencing othering, microaggressions, yeah. um, flat-out prejudice and discrimination. It's hard to put that into numbers that you can ask ChatGBT to demonstrate. You know, yeah. it, it, it doesn't lend itself to that kind of investigation. There are ways to investigate it, but it, it's it's not as, to me, easily represented as just asking ChatGPT to give the top 20 movies of Hispanic Americans and you get half of them that aren't even of Hispanic Americans. It, it really just drives home um, this problem and yeah. we're still in it. And um, not only do you have audiences that will see a, a, a movie with all Hispanic Americans and go, well, that's not for me, even though they don't watch the trailer. Uh, and even, maybe they do, but yeah, yeah. it's just like, well, it's, you know, they're, they're just, I can't tell you how many times I've heard this. Because, you know, as a half Japanese person, I'm not used to being represented. So when I was born, <laughs> I had to say, well, don't expect to see you represented. So just enjoy movies yeah, yeah. of any sort. And so I slotted into watching a lot of white people movies and identified with Luke Skywalker, even though he doesn't look like. But you ask white people who have always had a plethora of of art that represents them, you ask them to stretch themselves and they will say no. And and yeah. so so there's that. And you have producers and the money people yep. that won't green light this stuff. What because, are you talking about? You had 16 Candles. You had the Goonies. I mean, well, come on. What else do you want? Yeah. You had Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, <laughs> long had Kung Fu with, with Kate. With yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised that 16 Candles didn't show up as an Asian American movie because, uh, you know, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, if in my lifetime this never gets better, that is, I, I don't really care that much, but what I want is our country to not be racist Hmm. and to not look at Hispanic Americans or Asian Americans or black Americans or Indian Americans or native Americans and think of them as foreigners or others or strange or threatening or dangerous or Hmm. unknown to them. There's a, did you ever watch Key and Peele? Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the skit of the, the magical Negro trope? Where like there's a guy I forget what the problem is, and then it's like, oh, I can help you with that, or whatever. I think you've been looking for the right. And then one of them shows up, and there's like two of them, and they're kind of competing, like who's gonna be the more magical Ma- one? Well, because <laughs> right, they, they don't have roles in right. movies, so they're right. both trying to. They're the, out. they're like you were saying with Mr. Miyagi a little bit. It's like, oh well, if we're gonna have that person in this movie, right. they've got to be strange, magical, different, right. alien. Their know? only place. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um, uh, it, it's bothersome, and it also kind of cuts to the core because 
you know, people, as I think Reagan said, they vote with their feet, right? So Mm -hmm. meaning that a lot of white people can say that they're not racist, but how many actually, and many do for sure, but as a whole, how many of them actually want to see a movie about Hispanic Americans, want to see a movie about Asian Americans telling a story that is a little bit Asian, has a little Asian American flair to it instead of the European American flair that's always being represented. You know, how many of them actually pay that that ticket price without saying, well, we should do this? You know, how many of them uh, are see a trailer of a movie and say, yeah, you know, like Godzilla minus one, for example. It's not Asian American. Did you see this movie yet? Oh my gosh, so good. We saw it. Remember, we went and saw. It. Oh yeah, you and yeah, I saw it. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, I forgot. We, it was were, me. we were blown away by that. Movie. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, it it did better than the. Like typical... my brother didn't believe me. I'm like, dude, you got to see the movie. He's like, what? Yeah, and I understand, right? The skepticism is justified. I had it, um, <laughs> and you could argue that we're part of the problem, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know a Godzilla movie. It's no, like, but, but uh, I will say, like, uh, as an example, like, it, honestly, you know, what was that movie, the Indian movie that that won those awards? Ra, Ra, um, do you know, it had that famous song. The song won an Oscar. Uh, it's, it's well, anyways, I haven't Slum seen Slumdog Millionaire. No, no, no. This was last year. It, it's called like Raw. Forget what it's called. And the song was oh yeah very yeah. popular. Yeah yeah um, okay. Yeah. I haven't seen the movie. Neither have I. And I got to be honest, I don't have an interest in seeing the movie. Neither do I. I'll say, in general, I, I don't have an interest in seeing Bollywood movies. I don't mind Bollywood, but that movie, whatever it's called, it I saw enough previews and enough people, cr- you know, critiques, critique the movie, who loved the movie. Lots of people said, they, you know, like another channel on YouTube that I watch yeah. is, um, God, what's that guy? He does pretty long long videos uh what's his name hmm. anyway uh patrick patrick something okay anyway he did a whole video about how he went down this bollywood road okay. and went to india and looked at the and provided history and would show these different movie stars and then got to that that one movie mm-hmm. and I still didn't want to see it because it's like fa- it looks like Fast and the Furious kind of, and I, I'm right. not into Fast and the Furious. Uh, I, I I don't mind people liking that sort of stuff, but that's not but the sort of thing I want to watch. My in my defense, I would say it's the style that I don't like. Um, it's like similarly, th- there are some styles of movies that come out here that I don't like, even though they're not from Bollywood. Right. I'm not right? saying that that's 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 racist. And you know, maybe many white people, but I'm not talking about uh styles that are foreign to Americans yeah. cuz a lot of Hispanic American and Asian American and Black American art is completely within and by the way influenced and formed a lot of the mainstream American art expectations, yeah. you know. Um so I'm not saying that um uh, so I guess Godzilla minus one is an example of like that movie where some people look at that. It's like, well, it's kind of a, it's a pretty foreign style. But what I would tell people with Godzilla minus one is, although it is, because it is very Japanese and made by Japanese people and it's Godzilla for crying out loud, but it is very uh, familiar. It has very familiar story beats and emotion yeah. and is just a wonderful movie. It's pretty tight, pretty short, pretty understandable. It's not out of, it's not out of control with its plot. And um, anyway, so is that what you're saying? Well, actually, I think that I'm finding what I'm saying. I, I'll give you another example. I don't like uh, modern country music. Yeah. And I, I, it's not because it's mostly done by white people. As an example, Beyonce just put out a, a country music and it's like number one in the country charts. And everyone's minds are blowing up because there's a lot of racism in that in that community. But I heard the song. I still don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so plus I, I don't wonder, I don't like I don't really like pop music. I wonder so, if there's a difference though where like there's maybe a preconceived notion that I'm sure I have as well of like, oh, this movie has all these people that don't look like my people. Therefore, I'm probably not going to like that movie, even if the movie is actually good and something you would like. Yeah. Similar to how, and this analogy is hard, but similar, like, if I, if I saw a movie come out right now that is about 
um, maybe the the South, and there's a lot of people that have Southern accents, and they're all white, and they're talking. I don't know. I, I'm thinking maybe I might have a preconceived notion that maybe I don't want to see that movie. And then I see it, and it's a great movie. I'm wondering if there's like a similar effect. And it takes movies that are really great to burst through that glass ceiling, so to speak, for for more people to see them. I mean, yeah, it, it's a good it's a good point. I I don't. I mean, because when I look at the list of white American movies, you have The Godfather. Um, there's nothing relatable to you and I no, of true. that story. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, there's Shawshank Redemption. That's about going to prison. You and I have no yeah. experience with that. I, I, I don't know what... Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm getting at because basically you're right. I, th- I think it's it's just a matter of, um, of quantity as well because there's just not that much to pick from. Well, I, I think it is a valid point that... Uh, well, one, I don't want to tell anybody that they're racist for not seeing a person of color movie when they decide to go to a movie. I'm I'm saying that, one, there's not enough choices. Two, it, it doesn't really matter to me, like I yeah, said. Yeah. Like, if we change the movie thing, that really doesn't oh, okay. change anything about <laughs> the microaggressions and the, the oppression and the marginalization that happens all the time. I think I know what I'm trying to get at. And, and I already know that this isn't even what your point is, but I'm just saying... Imagine that a preview comes out where there's several uh, Hispanic Americans in it and they're speaking a lot of Spanish during the preview and some of the meals they're cooking, they look kind of like maybe Mexican or Spanish or something. And someone is watching that preview who maybe is a white American and watching it and it's like, ah, oh, that's probably not a movie for me because they feel like that's not a community they're familiar with or that, you know. It doesn't mean that they're racist, but it just means. But I think what we're trying to get at is like, there are many movies that are in the, the list of the white movies, let's say, that have nothing to do with the the cultural aspects of being white or, or anything like that. They're just good movies, mm-hmm. and there's not enough of those kinds of movies. Right. And I and yeah. yeah, that's like some of these fictional stories, like Silver Linings Playbook. Yeah, I'm not saying that the people are wrong for not having one no. or, or both of the leads no. a person of color, but it didn't neither matter one, that but they neither were one is a person of color. But it didn't, it also didn't matter. The plot wasn't like, well, you, could, you can't you, have the plot if they're you, not white. You, you're right. right. You could have had yeah. uh, The Truman Show, right. um, uh, Bre- Breakfast Club, right. Big Lebowski. So Perfect. really it's about representation of these communities in the movies, not that you have to make movies that are in a specific, a specific style or anything like that. Yeah, and yeah. and again, I, I don't. I'm not looking for quotas or pressure. The you know the casting directors, it's it's just reflective yeah. of how America just denies that BIPOC people even exist. <laughs> you know, if aliens watched our top movies, top yeah. 100 movies, they would think that 99 percent of Americans are white. Um, you know, like with I've I've complained about this before in the first season of white lotus which uh, supposedly takes place in hawaii and and if anyone's have ever been to hawaii everyone looks like me <laughs> there are yeah, right. s- like a few white people and right. i'm not even joking like it, there aren't very many white people right. just pure white people in hawaii <laughs> um everyone is uh half asian or asian or you know uh, but right, and, and that Pacific Islander. White Lotus, like the only, there's only like two. There's Islander one character, yeah. the pregnant woman. Yeah. And after the first episode, I think she's she's not, she doesn't even show up again. <laughs> and then you have yeah. the love interest of the friend, right? Uh, but he uh, hardly has any lines. But at least that's accurate. You know, it's like they, as they're writing, it's like, we can't have a white guy be the love interest as a local. He, right. She has to actually, um, you know, like the the concierge. Now, I love the concierge. I don't think anyone could have played it better than that actor did. So I, I don't disparage it for that. But even just when you looked at the background extras, there weren't very many people that looked like me. And you know why? Right. Because they filmed it in Italy. <laughs> Yeah, and so economically, yeah. it wouldn't make sense to <laughs> fly in a bunch of Hawaiians, right? Right. Uh, because you have a bunch of Italians that'll be extras. And then we can't ignore one of the obvi- one of the obvious reasons why historically we didn't see a lot of 
Hispanics, uh, uh, Asians in represented in movies, let alone as lead characters, right? It is first of all in in a lot of those communities you had bigger struggles to begin with, and so if you're already in a disadvantaged community, so, uh, you, your life choices are a lot more limited. So the idea of like, oh, I could be an actor in Hollywood or whatever, it's like, well, really? Like, no, you can't. Let alone that if you go and try, the chances you're going to land a role are are even more limited because most of the roles are looking for someone that doesn't look like you, you know. And so, yeah, that's all true. And so then you add that historical aspect. Um, but I think right now I'm starting to see more, you know, people added to movies yeah. that are, you know. Absolutely, just, especially so. when you consider series, TV, yeah. TV series. When you look at Netflix and, you know, I'm guessing that there's – definitely someone on the casting directing side that's like look we're gonna get canceled if we just have a bunch of white actors so we've got to get but isn't it better like it's great because that's what our society looks like yeah like the bear and i'm not saying like look like i am not saying that if you're making a historical drama set in england in blah blah you should cast all people that look hispanic like i'm not saying that but like the bear has a diverse cast and it's great because of it because it feels real it feels right you know, yeah, and it, similarly, a lot of movies, as I've talked about before, take place in Los Angeles. Yeah. Which, let me give you the stats on that. What percentage is Hispanic in Los Angeles? Hispanic in Los Angeles has got to be like um, 35%. Almost 50%. Wow. White people. Yeah, I guess... 35%. 29. Wow. So how many <laughs> Incredible. how many movies and TV shows right. are Set in e LA <laughs> are explicitly taking place in Los Angeles? All of them. <laughs> and they have um mostly white people yeah. if not across the board white people yeah. as the actors. Yeah. Um it's a huge percentage. That's crazy. Um, and then Asian Americans, Los Angeles, twelve percent, probably more again when you include Hapas. So that's really that's that's the stat that's really unbelievable. Yeah. It, it, like um uh Bear, the Bear takes yeah. place in Philly? In Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's probably a lot of white people and a lot of black people. Yeah. Of course there's Asians and yeah. Hispanics. But not as many Asians as there are in Seattle or Los Angeles. So, okay. But, you know, <laughs> half Hispanic. Like, is it improving? Yes. Yeah. But it, it it's it's a problem. So let's take a break. We get back. Let's finish with, um, with women in movies and right. see how that compares. Okay. Let's do it. All right. We're back from the break. Let's do another OPP, Birdo. OPP. These people became patrons all the way back in 2021 uh we have a natalia from austria did you say anatalia or just natalia natalia oh sorry okay from austria mia from thornbury australia mm. we have another natalia what? from brussels belgium oh my goodness we have lise or lies from hasselt belgium we have dewey or Duvi from Essen, Antwerp, Belgium. Oh. We have Charlene from Edmonton, Alberta. We have Jessica from Petersboro, Ontario. Stella from Markham, Ontario. By the way, all these people are not from the United States. I, I, I think I organized them by that. We have Stella. We have Rania from Ottawa. Rox from Montreal. Sarah from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Mm. Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Wow. Eli from Aurelia, Ontario. Yosef from Gravenhurst, Ontario. Michelle. A lot of names I haven't heard. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle from Switzerland, Geneva. Malika from Switzerland. Uh, Zurich, I believe. Is Zurich in Switzerland? <laughs> Zurich, yeah. <laughs> Wait. Um, Anne from Bitburg, uh, Germany. Leah from Hamburg, Germany. Rexter from Berlin, Germany. Mm. Elke from Berlin. Stella from Berlin and uh, Aiste or Aiste or Aiste from Denmark. Wow! Thank you so much for becoming what a patron. Diverse, uh, and countries. Uh, I apologize for butchering your name and your country and everything about you, including <laughs> your culture. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oops. So, Berto, if a stereotypical <laughs> Hispanic American were in a, you know, were, well, no, an Hispanic American actor mm-hmm. is cast into a movie and the director is telling him to play a stereotypical <laughs> uh, Hispanic American and he is uh, trying to motivate uh, a small group of people to become a patron of the podcast, what would that sound like? Um, it would be something like this. Hi, um, I'm a Hispanic American, as you might not be able to tell, but um, I would like for you guys to consider... Uh, wait, why are you losing interest? Hey, hey m- mention drugs. Mention drugs. Oh, okay, well, you're not paying attention, but... Uh, hey, listen, everyone. Let me tell you about salsa and the good stuff I can give you, a little picante. Hey, have you thought of maybe maybe patroning uh, this podcast here, the Psychology Loco? Oh, yeah. Uh, what? Oh, yeah, the cocaine, man. I can snort it all day. Let's go. <laughs> I just canceled myself. <laughs> okay. So I asked ChatGPT list the top twenty movies about women. So I didn't say wi- American women. I just I just said just women. Okay. Just women. Just women. So I'm going to rattle these off all at once, and um, you know, see if you remember these movies, how okay. kind of iconic they are. Thelma and Louise, <laughs> Little Women, both of them. Aaron Brockovich, Hidden Figures, The Color Purple. The Help, Million Dollar Baby, Frida, Norma Ray, Wild, the one with Reese Witherspoon, Room, oh, that movie, Joy, J Law, North Country with Charlize, A League of Their Own with Madonna, <laughs> um, Elizabeth, about, I think, Queen Elizabeth, Mulholland Drive, Gone with the Wind, Blue Jasmine, Woody Allen movie, Kate Blanchett. Uh, Little Miss Sunshine, which I looked up because uh, I, I saw it back in the day, but uh, it's not really about women. It's, no, it's not. It's about there's a, whole, a little girl. There's a there's a, and a mom <laughs> and a mom. <laughs> um, and the movie Monster, another Charlize movie. So when you when you hear that whole list, what do you think? Well, first of all, I don't watch women movies, so <laughs> no. I mean, uh, here's a couple things. Definitely heard some things in there that don't belong. But there well, was well, some... What? Like Little Bus Sunshine doesn't really belong. Well, but, but also uh, Frida was in there. Yeah. That's well, um, a, a woman. But it's not American. Or, I didn't it, say American. Oh, Remember? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I said you... just any woman. Oh, okay. Okay. Then then yes, you're right. Yeah. Uh, then uh, there was a lot of heavy hitters in this list. Yeah. I mean, you could argue, is Mulholland Drive a movie about women? Mm, there's, <laughs> there's women in Mulholland Drive. And there's a woman lead... So, yeah, I mean, mm. if, you're, if you're going off of, like, I mean, like, Thelma and Louise is a movie about women. Yeah. <laughs> Little Women is a movie yes. about women. Aaron Brockovich. Yes. H- H- Hidden Figures. Yes. Color f- Purple, The Help, I guess. What, yeah. Is the color purple? I don't, I don't remember. Enough. Yeah, it, it's, it's pretty heavily. Okay. F- and I, it's interesting that they're throwing in non-white people yeah. movies. Uh, Million Dollar Baby, it's about a, yep. a woman boxer. Yep. Uh, Frida, a woman, uh, you know, uh, Norma yeah. Ray, Wild, yeah, yeah. Room. Uh, Is Joy. Wild the one where she, wait, no, no. What's the one where uh, where she's psycho? Or uh, not psycho, but no, she's like. I think she might have she's issues. She's a runaway and she. Oh, no, no. You're thinking of, kills. The, you're thinking of the one from the 90s with um, Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, Kiefer. Yes. And uh, I, it's actually, it was filmed oh, around Seattle. Where, where she disappears. And there's a. Like when you're actually going to Snoqualmie, they they have a yeah a Anyways, poster yeah. Um, with uh, no. But actually, I'm thinking of a different movie with Reese Witherspoon, where she's kind of crazy. I don't know. Okay, uh, but this is her hiking. Oh, that's a more recent. Movie. Uh, so, uh, but it, these are great. A lot of these are great movies. Right. So yeah, but it is notable that again, if I ask ChatGPT to give me the top. 200 movies about white Americans. I'm guessing there wouldn't be a single miss on that list. Yeah. You know, maybe eventually. But you ask for 20 movies about women, yeah. and it gives you Little Miss Sunshine, which I guess it's not like, you know, Dr. Strangelove or something, which I don't know if there's any. Well, I guess there's maybe one woman in that 
as as a sure. I think what's his face is having sex with in the hotel or something. I, I think the name is weighing it heavily, right? Little, Little Miss, Miss Sunshine. Sunshine. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, it's a girl too. But uh, so we could we could absolutely but consider like what about girl interrupted? <laughs> <laughs> we could consider that a miss, yeah. Little Miss Sunshine. So that's just kind of telling that it's struggling to come up with twenty. Sure. But I will say when I look at this list, it's pretty solid. You yeah. Know? Um, uh, it's a much better list than the Hispanic American and the Asian American list. Right. <laughs> Especially when you think about the iconic nature. So, I mean, Thelma and Louise, Little Women, Aaron Brockovich, Hidden Figures, Color well, Purple. And, and also, if, so now if you These take are it, household, uh, you know, movies, if you will. And if you take it from a different direction, which is, because one of the things we were talking about is, like you gave Harold and Kumar as an example. So, um, there's been movies since the movie industry started that has female leads and stuff like that. So that bar is actually much lower. Now, if we start talking about minority female leads. Or, yeah. um, well, then you're really screwed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess if we look at, cause I didn't ask, you know, gender wise yeah. for Hispanic American. And I'm just trying to think if, well, Selena, um, some of them real women have curves. Yeah. Uh, Mi Vida Loca. Actually, that one might, I wonder if the, 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 in some cases it skews because when you're trying to, like in some ways, if you're trying to make a movie that will be of an underrepresented community, you might go for the least represented parts of those least represented communities. Why? Because that's what you're trying to do. Like, you're, like in other words, um, there aren't a lot of movies about just like a... Uh, Hispanic American doing normal stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, but there are movies about a school of disenfranchised Hispanic American kids right. with a Hispanic American teacher trying like to get a, them back in an line. Interesting angle to it. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, now, is sexism over? No. <laughs> this list is far inferior to the just general white Americans. And I'm I'm actually looking in the 20 white Americans and trying to see if any of these could be, well, I guess Silver Linings Playbook, it's half, you know, led by a woman. Yeah. And then I'm looking up the lists. You could argue that Breakfast Club is has a pretty strong woman. But like Gone with the Wind was in this list. That's in the that's in the women yeah. list. Yeah. What, what is because Scarlet is a woman. I mean, it's been a little while since I've seen that movie, but yeah, I, I think that um, What's His Face the male lead, he kind of comes in and out, whereas the movie, uh, the the one character you follow is Scarlet, I think, okay, so from beginning might, to end. Yeah, might. I could be wrong on that. Um, yeah, I'm just looking. Like, what about the sound of music, man? Uh, <laughs> yeah, not a single... I, oh, Titanic. <laughs> so of all the movies, you got Titanic and Silver Linings Playbook. That have a female. That have... Or a female that, that They share it yeah, yeah. with a dude. Um, so, uh, and then I'm also looking at the list, if there's any Hispanic American or Asian American, even remotely represented, I mean, I guess you got Forrest Gump, it, it takes place in Vietnam for a while, but that doesn't count, right? Uh, it's, it's Godfather, Shawshank, Pulp Fiction, Big Lebowski, Breakfast Club, Wolf of Wall Street, Few Good Men. Yeah, not a single one of these movies has Hispanic Americans or... Yeah. Uh, or Asian Americans. Now, we I didn't do a list of black Americans um, because I didn't think we would have time. Um, but I'm just going to take a guess and say that the, that list would be better. Well, actually, I'll just type it in. By the way, it's funny to think that the split, like when you think of the Oscars, they split by gender. You know, you have best male in a performance, best, best female in a performance. Um, and I suppose that that was, that, that was probably originally done so that you would have some female representation because there were so many more males in um, right. leading roles. Right. So if you said best overall leading role, right. most often it would just go to a male. Yeah. And I wonder if that was even the case in the beginning. I don't know. And, you know, I'm not saying that there should be an Oscar for the best Asian American No, movie. I actually think that would actually be bad. That would be counterproductive. And again, I, I don't even care if this doesn't change. It's just an interesting data point that points to a larger problem. So looking at... Uh, I, so I asked, give me the top 20 movies about black Americans. Okay. And number one, 12 Years a Slave. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number two, Do the Right Thing. Yep. Pretty good. Moonlight. 
Yeah. Nailed it. Selma. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Get Out. Nailed yeah. it. Malcolm X. Black yeah. Panther. Black Panther. Are there black Americans? Nope. <laughs> yeah. So that's a miss. Uh, Hidden Figures. Good. Yep. Fruitvale Station. Good. I've heard of that one. Oh, it's, it's, um, it is a, a biopic of an actual event. You mean a biopic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, at least I, I'm pretty sure it's of an actual event. The Color Purple, good. Okay. Ray, good. Yeah. Django Unchained, good. Yeah. The Hate You Give, good. Precious, good. Oh, yeah. Straight Outta Compton, good. School great. Days, great. Barbershop, good. Great movies. Creed, good. If Beale Street Could Talk, uh, have, have Beale Street Could Talk. I, I know I've heard of this movie. Did I see this movie? Um... I don't know if I ever saw this movie. I think it it was up for an Oscar. Romantic drama. Huh. Uh, looks like it could be good. Um, and Boys in the Hood. So, wait, did they already say Boys in the Hood? I think they did that one twice. Uh, no, no. No? No. But well, there was... Yeah, what am what I... What was the one you said? I think I was primed by another movie... Um, straight out of Compton. Oh I think. <laughs> yes, that's what um, we both thought was boys. <laughs> yeah. So uh, because of so <laughs> that list, tea. as suspected, or, uh, Ice Cube. <laughs> this list, this list is actually better than I thought it would be, because a lot of these movies are again household names. Uh, you know, great uh, list, and a lot of them won Best Picture. Yeah. Um, you know, Malcolm X, Black Panther. <laughs> Uh, hidden figures. Oh, okay. So I guess it, it got two, or it just got one wrong, right? Um, Django Unchained, uh, Straight Outta Compton, Do the Right Thing, I Told You to Slave. Yeah. So uh, not as iconic, nearly iconic as the list of white American movies. So I would say compared but the, but the, to the, yeah. if I if I just given my cultural pocket. I would say that the black American list is more iconic than the women list because, you know, they have movies like Blue Jasmine on the women sure. list. And yeah, but... And a league, of her, a league of Their Own. Fun movie. Great fun. But come on. <laughs> but pretty iconic, I, yeah, I would but say. Yeah, but, but it's not like a 10 out of 10. <laughs> right. Or, or Reese Witherspoon Wild movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, well, that one did get a lot of accolades. For some people, amazing, but yeah. it's not a household name like like Do the Right Thing is. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, and certainly not a household name like every movie on the white American list, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's just my cultural pocket. You know, maybe others would disagree with that. But it is, it is an interesting... It's not really. I don't know what it says, but it, it, it's saying something that when I ask right. yeah, Hispanic American, Asian American, just women. I didn't even say American women. I said yeah. any woman, um, uh, white American, Black American. How it kind of slots, but it's a little counterintuitive because I would have thought it's interesting when you throw women in there, right? Because women could be of any race. Yeah. And uh, normally you would think, well, the 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 list of women movies would be atrocious, right? Yeah. No, but but again, like you have because the you know love stories and story like women have been part of movies from the get go. Yeah, it's but a lot of these you know, movies are not like at least focused on the love story. In sure. fact, I'm trying to find one of them that is even mildly focused. I mean, you could say Little Women. Oh, Gone with the Wind is okay, but even that, it's more about survival, yeah. civil war. Uh, you know, the love story is, I think, a part of the initial plot. But, um, I mean, Thelma and Louise, Aaron Brockovich, you know, I, these, these are these are stories about women. I wasn't know? bringing up the love story, though, to be clear, about like, well, you know, love stories, they would have one. I'm saying because from the very beginning of Hollywood, oh. you couldn't tell stories without a lot of them being like, so there's a it, love story. It, it, Hollywood had to have women. In Hollywood and, yeah. and the audience yeah. were accustomed to seeing women on yeah. on the silver screen. And then you add the the, you know, maybe uh machismo aspects of like, well, we also want to be like sex see sexy women on film. That you have to add the women into the movies. So it was natural to have women in movies from the get-go. Interesting. Whereas like it wasn't natural for the Hollywood director in the 20s, 30s, 40s to be like, you look Hispanic, 
I want you in my movie. Unless you're having a gang of bandolier pistoleros yeah. in, the, in the Western. Well, that is interesting because I wonder if, because there's a stereotype cast position for Hispanic Americans, that would be an, uh, an interim step to you know, getting eventual movies that are more normal- you know, in terms of like a story just about Hispanic Americans. But I don't know when I, th I mean, this is just all us just talking off the top of our heads. But like, there were strong women characters in the, be you know, close to the beginning of yeah. the silver screen, you know, yeah. uh, Joan Crawford right. and other kinds of actors that were celebrated and held up as like, they didn't need men. You know, right. they, they're, the, the guys in their movies probably were secondary on the bill, yeah. you know, so... Because, but again, you know, it's because, you know, people wanted, you know, certain kind of attractive, attractive presence on the screen and attractive women and good actress, attractive women did well in that kind. But that doesn't mean, but they didn't, you know, necessarily have a movie focused on, on, on the woman as the, as the lead as much as they had guys in the lead. And then right. they'd have all... Not but that, it is, it they, just... They, they had some, but... Yeah, it's yeah. an interesting commentary though because i would never say that sexism was not as big of a deal um now and particularly in the past you know of course right. it, it is a big deal but i wonder if uh, people that have studied this sort of thing would say that when you look at the intersectionality of everything you know the the white world can't really and maybe doesn't want to ignore white women but again but, but yeah. the white world can and might want to ignore right. all of asian americans and all hispanic americans and all black americans do you remember the scene in amadeus where the king had some rule where they couldn't he didn't allow ballets in his operas who yeah. knows why but he had that rule and then mozart composes an opera in which there's a little ballet segment and the the court uh composer is like oh well you can't have that in the uh, you know, or the maestro. He's like, you can't have that because the king. And so then they're performing for the king or the king shows up at one of the rehearsals and they're doing the ballet dance without any music. And he's like, what is this? Well, your majesty, you don't allow ballet in your... Well, but this is ridiculous. No, no, put it back in. Similarly, imagine that you start making movies initially and it's like, well, you know... Do you just think of everything through the movie Amadeus? Everything is Amadeus. So we're, you know, we're starting the movie industry. It's early on. And then come watch my new movie. And you watch the movie and it's just dudes shooting each other. And you're like, oh, that's pretty fun. Then you watch the next movie and it's just dudes shooting each other. At some point, someone might be like, what, what about women? Like, we like women, right? Now they're not going to go and ask the, the black lady down the street or the Hispanic lady. They're going to grab some white women, but they're going to put them on the screen. Mm -hmm. And then some of them are going to be prettier than others. They're like, whoa, this is interesting. And so like, it's kind of a natural thing to just add women from the start. It doesn't mean that there wasn't sexism. In fact, there was a lot of problems with sexism and, and casting couches and all these kinds of things that developed. But what they weren't in need of was like, you know what? There's a lot of white guys in this movie, right? Like, or, or, unless it was like, there's a lot of white cowboys. That's fine, but they need to shoot other people that don't look so white. So either we get some white guys and paint them a little bit, or maybe grab a couple guys off the street, you know? Yeah. And that just was like, it, you could see it developing, and it took a while, for example, for for Black Americans to get representation because they themselves had to make movies, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? And, right, and you know, of course, there's a long history, particularly in the beginning of stage and film of just having white people do blackface for black right. people or that, that's a perfect or, example or like, yellow face you right, know it's like hey listen we need to tell a story here in which there are going to be black people should we go hire some no bobby here can do it let's just paint them yeah and in fact bobby does a better black person than any black person i know yeah right like, um like john wayne <laughs> plays genghis khan right uh right i think and is it because there was, like, are we to believe that literally no one, they couldn't have found anyone in the Asian world that could have played that role? <laughs> yeah. Um, Genghis Khan movie. And, and the sad thing yeah, is, like... that movie called The Conqueror. Right. From 1956. And, yeah, he, he's in total yellow face. And as we know, face. that kept happening all the way up until very recently, right? Yeah. Well, didn't Johnny Depp catch heat because he, he was Tonto? 
<laughs> in the yeah. Lone Ranger. I'm just looking at other other actors. Um, ironically, there's a lot of what look to be Hispanic actors playing Asians. You have Pedro Armendariz playing mm. a, 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 a Mongol, I'm guessing. Sure. You have Thomas Gomez playing Wayne Khan. <laughs> right. You look a little different. We need some different looking people. Yeah. Get over here. Yeah. yeah. Right. So even when they're yeah. literally writing a story right. about Asians, they still refuse because they, I don't know. I, I know one reason was because, well, if you can get John Wayne, you get John Wayne because he sells he sells Yeah, things. But, but notice that that doesn't work in reverse. Like, look, I personally, I like my James Bonds to be white, stuck up Brit dudes but if you could get idris elba or some other me mega famous cool black dude or hispanic or whoever to play a, a secret agent from england why not but the world lost its mind they're like what that's that's heresy right it's heretical and it's because like the thought of some other race playing a character that that's supposed to be a white character that's crazy but White characters playing other, that's fine. That We've been do doing that for hundreds of years. <laughs> right, right. And, and it is like, look, again, I, I personally, I like, if I'm watching a historical thing or whatever, I like to represent it the way it would have looked. So, you know, I don't need, yeah, you know. But if we're talking about a fictional character, a fictional character? Yeah. What, why can't that be whatever? Yeah. And well, then especially with James Bond, like, you know, Britain is a multicultural nation. Right. And... They're not all white people, so right. now, if, if again, you're telling a story from today, you could have another agent, right. of course, that would not be a white guy. And again, my personal bias, because I grew up with this, like, well, I still want to see a white dude doing it, but but I'm not going to die on that hill. The, the flip side of this is what we were saying before is, but why don't we just have more movies with people? Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> Good it, movies it, with people. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, so often, what was I watching? I think I was watching... Uh, a YouTube channel that was talking about World War II or something. And it was this really interesting drama that took place maybe in China. Um, like, for example, how many World War II movies have we seen about Americans and Germans fighting each other? Right. But how many World War II movies have we seen about Japanese Americans fighting Germans? Right. Um, there's one uh, uh, about the four for a second. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. You know, of all the people that fought in the European theater, you know, the vast majority were white Americans. Um, you have the, the Tuskegee Airmen movie that mm. was, I think, made by George Lucas, black airmen in, in Europe in World War II. And we've seen a lot of movies just about Germans in Nazi right. Germany, and right, right, no right. Americans are involved at all, right? Right. Well, what about movies about the Chinese getting raped and killed yeah, you know, there's there's probably historical. St oh, I I know what it was. It was about World War II, and there is this, uh, you know, Japan uh, landed in China. Are you talking about the rape of Nanking or no? no it was that? this. I mean, it might have led up to that, but there's this really famous story that's well documented, and there's a monument there in China, and it's a, a like a hotel or something, and the. Japanese had landed and they were about to begin their rape and killing and genocide mm -hmm. of the Chinese people. And this one colonel or something um, was like, that hotel or that building, that four-story building is a perfect place to defend, mm. but we're going to lose. <laughs> it was some, some kind of story like this. Right. And... I don't know if it was volunteers or whatever, but, you know, got a ragtag group of guys. I mean, just think of like a Quentin Tarantino, like, yeah. like 15 right, um, right. characters, different different um, personalities. Yeah. <laughs> and they get in this hotel and they hold out for a long time, like a number of days, maybe weeks. Yeah, yeah. There's all these documented raids by the Japanese and a lot of death and shooting and mortars and tanks and um, a lot, you know, there's these, like, there's this one scene where these, uh, the Japanese guys are trying to get in the building and uh, uh, like a whole, like five or six of them get in this little alleyway on the side of the building and they're about to climb in. And this one guy just on a whim 
grabs like a bunch of grenades, um, pulls the pins and jumps out the window and blows himself up and all the fucking Japanese guys and saves the the hotel for another number of days. Um, That's an amazing fucking story. And how cinematic can you get? You could tell that kid's backstory. You could make him a a complex character. Maybe, you know, he feels bad about not doing something earlier, kind of like, you know, with Godzilla minus one or whatever. And you could get Kieran Culkin to play him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which by the way I love him but <laughs> <laughs> and um and I I think the end of the story is the Japanese just decided to go around them oh cuz they couldn't there's like fuck it we can't it. and so they just left him there oh and my gosh. these guys held out uh I think for a long That's time incredible. even after that even though the Japanese army had already rolled Moved, past yeah. and um you know, that's just, you just can see the, the ending card where they're like, they lasted another three months. Yeah. But, and they gave, and what they did is they inspired Chinese people to fight back. Cause you know, at the time there was not a lot of confidence that the, cause it was unknown. Like, can we fight the, the imperial power of Japan? Like, we don't know. And look at these guys, like, you know, and there's this, and then, you know, and then you flash forward to an actual shot of the hotel with the placard and the monument and, you know, it brings tears to my eyes. It's, it's an amazing story. There are more stories like that than there are about the European theater. The amount of things that happened in Russia and China and the Philippines and Vietnam, like there's Just even because of the sheer number of people involved. Do you know how many yeah. of our fellow war action nerds would jizz their pants about a movie like that if it was made well? Yeah, yeah. You know, like when we saw Northman, that's a movie about oh, yeah. about uh, Scandinavians in right. in um, where are they? They're, they go kind of all over the place, Russia or something. Um, that's not about Americans. <laughs> no, nope. it's about uh, ancient you know Scandinavians and. Uh, yeah, you know, we we, ju- we, we went crazy. We, we just our pants, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, I why and then uh, the whole cast would be Asians, yeah, right, and and it would be an amazing movie. There's not a lot of movies like that, yeah. and, it, and, it, and it's 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 bothersome. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, more people need to get in the industry, I guess. And now, actually, never mind, because now you could just go request it from the Sora AI. God, have you seen that? Of course I have, yeah. Have you tried it out? It's not, you can't. I mean, it's very limit, limited access, only But of messages. course, right? I mean, if it can do what it can do yeah, with of images, yeah. of course it's going to be able to do it. So the, the you know, in two years hearing us talk about this, it's going to sound like when people talked about the internet when it first came out. But I just want to ask you, I saw, like... The prompt that I saw was they asked it to make a movie, a war movie with soldiers that had helmets with red knit cap, yes, like red red yarn uh, helmets or something. Yeah. And as I'm watching it, they kind of zoom in on a soldier's face. So that's all computer generated. It's all pixels out of thin air. It's not a. It's not an actual person nope it's better than cg oh well yeah because like because because that that i I mean i just saw a little little because what's interesting is it's so fascinating um what's happening is with cg you are developing a geometry model with lots of teeny little triangles and then you're putting textures, which are little, you right. know, stretch. You're, you're essentially images. having to sculpt. And then you're sculpting it, and then you're putting lighting on it, and then you're putting effects, and you're putting droplets on the skin. And by now, the, of course, the, the CG has gotten to the point where it is photorealistic, right? But, but it's still not very, you know, like when they did Luke Skywalker. doing any of that. Like, you know, with Luke Skywalker, right. like, right. they can get pretty close right. to but a human face, but you can tell it's not real. This isn't doing any of that. Right. There is no, now, they, by the way, they could also have a model, uh, an AI model that generates the geometry of the triangles. In fact, they already do. They could, but this isn't bothering with any of that. It's literally just doing pixels. It's skipping the middle band. It's, it's skipping it's, the middle band. It's, it's going just straight to, to making to, in the image. To the photons that hit our eyes. Yeah. But the reason it looks so good is because, again, it all comes down to statistics, right? Like statistically predicting what needs to be where. And 
it's like, you know, if you feed it enough things of the kind that is correct, then it would actually be statistically unlikely that it would produce something that doesn't look Yeah, right. I mean, it, it's not hard to predict in, well, you tell me, at how many years from now will more than half of the movies being produced by Hollywood be perhaps indistinguishable from live action movies, but a majority, if not all of the footage is created by AI. Yeah, dude. Well, first of all, I don't know because some of it might get artificially blocked from legislation by, by legislation. Regardless of that. Uh, te- technology wise, I made a bet last year with Seth. <laughs> um, maybe it w- was it last year? I think it was last year. Um, my timeline was, I said, last year I said, within five years, we will have fully generated movies. And I think I was being too conservative. But that doesn't mean that overnight, all movies are going to be generated. Um, And even when they can be generated, it doesn't mean humans will want to only see movies that are all computer generated. No. There also might be a backlash. There might be a thing. In fact, I don't know if you've seen, the reactions online have yeah. been really negative. Yeah. But there, there's often, an, you know, it, it when it comes to economics, yeah, um, especially once people become habituated to the technology and it seems less evil, um, I, you know, corporations always win. The, yeah. The, the, the people who are mortified by this are not the corporations. They are... The labor, yeah, and and, yeah. and the consumer is probably mortified for the labor, but labor always loses unless you have legislation, which uh, and I guess unionization. But you know, you go overseas and blah blah blah. Uh, one of the things that makes me sad about it actually is the because um, you can imagine that there'll be maybe a channel that you you subscribe to, like you would Netflix, but the whole content of this channel is all computer generated, but you don't care because it's entertaining. It's like the kind of, let's say we were talking about food, you know, we're talking about like how we like watching things about food. You can imagine an AI generated channel that shows you all sorts of food and some of it is real food, some of it is fake food, but it just looks good and it's great. And, and you just watch it all the time and you're paying your money. So someone's making money and that's paying for the AI compute power, the, all the computers. Now you're watching that. I'm subscribed to that channel but I'm getting other stuff that you're not seeing. And the thing that makes me a little sad is if you think it's hard today to find common ground with the variety of Netflix and Amazon and all the shows where you're, oh, you haven't seen that show? What about this show? Oh, you haven't seen this show? Yeah. Imagine when it's basically 7 billion different shows. Yeah, well, so maybe you already <laughs> thought about this, but this occurred to me when I learned, when I, of course I knew that this was coming, but when I saw it in action, I was like, whoa. Um, and I'm sure it's it's not like you just say, write a Star Wars-like movie and then press a button. You know, I'm sure it's not yet at that point, but it won't be long. And it certainly wouldn't be long for someone to feed in a script, right? Uh, you know, that's that's closer. But the point is, is that I had this thought that it makes total sense to me that when this is really running, as you're saying, where you can uh, have a Netflix or maybe Netflix itself... Definitely Netflix itself. <laughs> and you can say, uh, you know, I, I want to watch what I want to watch, and I don't care if it's AI or not. Yeah. That eventually the movies would be individually tailored to the viewer. Yep. Like, there are certain things about movies that I don't like. Like, one of the things that I hate is wet streets on a, yeah, on a, on a sunny day. <laughs> Or wet streets, and yeah. um, maybe it rained earlier, but all the cars are right. are dry. But they're doing that for the dramatic effect of the wet streets. Yeah. All I see is a complete waste of of potable water, <laughs> and it doesn't. You know, it, uh, what movie w- were we watching, Stacy and I? Oh, we were watching American Fiction, which I recommend, by the way, uh, up for an okay. Oscar. Pretty good. I mean, it's not like oh, mind blowing. Oh my gosh, but it's pretty funny. Okay. Parentheses. I'll tell you something about. Um, uh, Anatomy of a Fall. Okay. I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> so um, I'm watching American Fiction, and there's this really dramatic moment at the end, and he's running across the street, and because I'm so weird, I yelled out in the living room to Stacy that 
dry streets, you know, because <laughs> usually in a scene like that, you got to wet the street. And the the street, the scene looked more dramatic and better because it, it has a, a feeling of realness. Anyway, so I could ask it to even alter live action movies. And, mm. and I would say, you know, there's all these toggles or I would just type in and say, don't show me yeah. wet streets unless it makes sense to the story if it's raining or recently rained. Well, that, and, that's and, and easy, it could, right? it could literally yeah. like take out of well, past movies. Uh, certainly that. And then you could just customize your feed and say, look, here's, here's things I never want to see or yeah. here's what. Or yeah. give, me, give me the Godfather but throw in an Asian American character. They're reptiles. They're uh, aliens. They're I mean, that would be so. I'm, I'm just trying to think of like an actual. No, no, but you could do all of it. Or no, give me episode nine, Star Wars. And well, that'd be too much alteration. Um, and my point is, is that, uh, and of course it can go really far, right? It's like, um, you know, tell me a Star Wars trilogy that's close, but based on you, what you know about my preferences right. or what you would imagine my preferences to be, uh, you know, rewrite the story and cast new characters and right. have a new plot or not and show me it. Um, and then it would be such a narcissistic masturbatory way of watching TV because it would be exactly what I want and only for me. And you can't relate with anyone else. Right. That's, but isn't that, but sad, it would though? be so <laughs> tempting because you know, scenes like wet streets, it's, it's stupid, but wet streets, it pulls me out of the movie. It, it doesn't for many others, but most others. But for me, it does. And if I could, if I could just toggle, it's sort of like when people would say it's wrong to dial in the DNA of your child because you would discriminate and right. you would get rid. You know the whole Gattaca thing, right? You get rid of the human variability and stuff. And you ask people in the past that question, and even today, and they'd say, yeah, that you just got to let nature take its course. You ask uh, expecting parents who are doing in vitro or something, and you say, we have the technology to detect among these three available fertilized eggs that two out of the three are at a much higher risk of alcoholism, Alzheimer's, yep. leukemia. <laughs> but this other... A fertilized egg has the genetic markers of average height, lower risk of leukemia. How many parents are going to say, I don't care? And some parents do. Some parents, yeah. ah, I'm not. But many parents will. So when you ask them the general question, is AI a good idea? Is it going to ruin the world? They're, yeah, it's going to But then Netflix offers this little toggle. Would you rather not have this in your shows? Yeah. That begins the slippery slope to you just going on Netflix and saying, these are my top 100 movies, and it just, um, it may be a personality test or something. It like scours the Google database for like your purchasing <laughs> and where you live and your age and all that profile. And then you just say, um, uh, and then it gives you this homepage with like 20 different options and it just observes the way you click and then slowly it, it just starts to, give you new stories that are exactly aligned to what you've already watched and what you like. Maybe even the mood you're fucking in, Birdo. Like, you're in a romantic time in your life and it knows to feed you romantic movies because Google knows that and it sells that information. That, like, Well, that, so certainly uh, that is how it works now. You know, uh, YouTube, Netflix, all of it works like that now, but in much more primitive ways. But it, it definitely works like that now. Right, like all but, your but, YouTube but, feed is customized to the things that that good, the algorithm. Good point. Thing, yeah. Good point. Hadn't thought about yeah. that, but um, but of course, you know, the algorithm and the amount of data will and the amount of monitoring will get more elaborate, more and the customizability in the is infinite, right? Like, and yeah. but today, YouTube and Netflix, all they have to go off of is whatever is people have made, what they've already right. have right. available to them in the future. Um, and you know, you could argue even Netflix is limited because. They only have the license to um, show, at least someone like me, the vast majority of things I want to watch is not available on Netflix, movies or otherwise. Um, but imagine if Netflix could give me not only a movie I want to see, but the best set of movies. Like, I don't know if I'm going to say no to that. If, if I can click a button and say, I want to see the 10 best movies of my entire life. <laughs> 
better than any of my top 10 movies I've ever, I want to see the 10 best movies and an AI can make that uh, or even just get close because movies to me are transformative, right? The, the they, they, catch, change, they change my life. Yeah. The, there's a catch though, because what happens is that th there's all the parts about repetitive human behavior that then becomes predictable. And that those are the things that actually resonate. The reason great movies resonate with a lot of humans is because they tap into things that are actually predictable about humans. But... They stretch things. Right. But the aut auteurship of a human making a specific movie, like a Quentin Tarantino or whatever, is that it's, it's put together in a way that isn't algorithmically definable, right? Like, yeah. now, you could say, well, that's because we don't have enough data. Maybe. But... Uh, I, uh, one aspect that I think about is when you're playing a video game and you learn the cheat codes, at first it's really fun. You're like, ooh, ah, look, like playing Grand Theft Auto and you're like, ah, now I've got a tank, now I've got a thing. Oh, the cops can't harm me. And it's really fun. And then like maybe 10, 15 minutes into it, you're like, okay, they, this just got boring. Similarly, if you think of Mid Journey, the, the, where you can create your own images or Dali, any of these, initially it's like, oh, this is amazing. Look at this. How many images are you generating each day? Me? Yeah. None. None. I generate every now and then because I need it. I'm like, oh, I need an image for this. But the the lure of like, I could generate any image. I, what if I wanted Picard wearing a bear for a hat, riding a bicycle? Yeah. Right? Okay, I, have, I have a side note on this very thing. So before Mid Journey and all those things happened, AI images must have been available to people that, and it wasn't widely known, right, right. at least by me. And... I think I was on Instagram or something, and I saw these people start posting them. I saw that I saw these like advertisements. Mm. I think for for art. Ah, okay. And I saw, <laughs> ironically, they're of cats, and I thought, oh, that's kind of a that's kind of a cool little uh -huh. cat art thing that would go well in my bathroom because oh, I have a lot, I I lot of cat art. <laughs> and I bought something, and um, it, you know, it's kind of expensive because the. The frame was expensive. Okay. And at the time, it just felt like, well, that's a pretty special, unique art, right. art print, you know? Right. Well, um, then all the AI starts coming out, and I'm, you know, it's in my bathroom. I'm, I'm sitting on the toilet, and I'm, I'm sort of looking at it, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my oh, God. It's, yeah. and, it, 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 and I could, if you ever go in there, kind of take a look at it. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm 98% sure it's okay. AI, and it's not even particularly good AI. <laughs> um, so I spent, I don't know, maybe 50 bucks on this thing. And I'm like, whoever got out ahead of this, but right. for me, it completely degrades right. that print because right. uh, there's no humanity in it, right? So yeah, I, I totally get that. And maybe that will preserve real life filmmaking. But, but And I think it will, but but with a couple of cautions. Number one, it is still going to be true. Look, right now, I I watch YouTube feeds every day that if without me knowing overnight were replaced by AI but felt the same, I would still watch them, right? Because it is implicitly, it's explicitly entertaining to me. Okay, but so I still believe what you're saying will happen. We will all have our Netflix subscriptions and our Amazon subscriptions, and we will have the customizability. Of course, we have to mention Joan is awful, which is kind of along these right. lines. Right. But there's a couple of things that I think are going to happen. One of them is because of this problem that I'm saying where like if everyone was literally only watching completely unique content at all times, then we wouldn't have the ability to relate in a conversation. Like the moment where, where you said, oh, Professor of Rock, I'm like, oh, I love Professor. That wouldn't happen. Yeah. It'd be like, oh my gosh. So I was watching Daisy Doe's. Like what's Daisy? Do um, you wouldn't know. It's it's a thing I only know because no one in the world knows because it was made for me at two a.m. in the morning and no one will ever see it. Because when I send it to a friend for them to watch, they're like, "Sorry, I'm busy watching the billion hours that are generated for me every day that are just for me." That would suck. And I think us humans, like us, we would we would be like, "Let's go watch a movie together. Like, let's actually watch something we can relate with." Well, <laughs> yeah, not all the time though. Yeah, we will still watch a lot of AI content, and but I even wonder with AI that, movies. I even wonder theater. with that that you know, it, it, especially if we're not in a theater together and yeah. we're watching 
you're at your house and I'm yeah. at my house watching, and then the next day we talk about it. Um, you know, like we were talking earlier about representation. Yeah. If I could, you know, say as an interim step, they come out with a heist movie that is, you know, world renowned, supposed to be like one of the best heist movies ever made. And there's a little toggle switch that says, what kind of representation are you looking for? And I could flip that for half age for a lot of HAPA people, if it applies to the story, you know, then I don't know. I'm thinking I'm going to flip that switch. I mean, I mean maybe, maybe not, maybe not all the characters, but, um, and, and, you know, give it some, give it some HAPA flair, like some spam Usubi thrown in there or something. Um, but but it doesn't tell me it's going to do that because then it would kind of spoil and it. No you know? Asians get paid or benefit from that. <laughs> um, well, uh, uh, th- of course there are ethical, responsible consumers, but ninety nine point. I mean, people drive cars; they don't even care. No, 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 I know. I guess what I was getting at was, it would be nice if right now, what was happening was that there were already or r- about to be regulations that really protected human creators and human actors and human all these things to say, look, yes, that toggle does exist. But guess what? When you toggle it, all those actors are actually real people. Yeah, great. And they're getting paid, even though the AI is generating N percent of what they're doing. We captured their performances and they get royalties. And in some cases, they actually did act in those things, whatever, right? But that's not, the the default is not going to be that unless, I mean, Here's the, the thing that's really depressing and scary. Right now, the people that would be drafting that legislation and all those things, they're busy with all this other BS that has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. So I'm like, Ugh. and I'm thinking, yeah, dude, I want to be able to relate to you and I don't want to hear yeah. and listen. You know what it's going to be like? Remember when Mitch was like, who cares about your dreams or whatever? Like, you know, I have a dream last night. I want to tell you about it. who cares. It's going to be like that. Dude, I saw this thing in my special feed. Like, I don't care. I've got my own special feed. But go to hell. <laughs> compared to even ten years ago, particularly thirty years ago, we're already there. Yes, and, and yet I, we exactly. still socialize, and yeah. you know, we just say yeah. uh, even the stuff that you and I watch that yeah. we share, like Professor of Rock. Um, we either don't watch those the same episodes because I think he puts out an episode every right. day, right. Um, or we don't remember the details of the episodes. Yeah, but, so, but I'm already sad about it. I'm not. I'm not going to be sad. I am already sad. I'm going to be more sad. But like, <laughs> uh, like another AI function that I think would be cool is documentaries. I could ask the AI to uh, make me a documentary that is 20 minutes long about that event I said earlier about that yeah. that hotel or whatever that building in, in in China, and recreate some of the scenes based on actual first-hand accounts. Right. Um, that would save me a lot of time. I wouldn't have to... Fi- I can't read Chinese, so I'd, you know, I'd have to uh, look all that up. And you know, the AI could read that language and yeah. sift through it and, and figure it out. Would I know if it was 100% accurate? No, but it'd probably be a lot more accurate than a movie or a documentary would be, you know? There, there are other aspects that may not be easily reproducible by the current AI techniques, and that is... Uh, Knowing what things to string together in a way to actually be great art that enough humans find to be great may require human experience to some extent. And what I mean by that is uh, the AI currently, OpenAI, all these things, none of those AIs have a, a physical experience and therefore everything, like everything that ChatGPT outputs is what it gleams from the data that's written text plus now some imagery and stuff. The Sora recreations of the videos, they are based on data, right? And physically accurate somehow. I mean, not somehow, meaning somewhat physically accurate, right? But Do none have, of it is based on... Is there any kind of engine making sure that it you know, holds no. to reality? Or No, it- but it's trained on like Unreal Engine and on real movies and things. So it's trained in with the data that it's trained on is physically accurate. So it doesn't have any bootstrapping to not have situations where there's no gravity or there's a nose on the top of someone's I, head. Or... I would be ridiculously surprised if they had a physics engine that's double checking things. <laughs> no, okay. that would be that. Yeah. Right. But, but so all that, all that's true and all that's fine. But at the same time, 
it, what it doesn't have is that experience of like heartbreak or um, pain or hunger in a physical way, right? Like it can't. So I, I wonder how much someone like a Quentin Tarantino or a director like Christopher Nolan or something needs to experience what it's like to be human in order to make the things that we really love versus how much it can really just be generated from data and if it how much of it can be generated from data but would still be within the category of derivative versus feeling original enough and i don't know i don't know the answer to those questions yeah and who knows we'll find out yeah <laughs> um but i would imagine that over time that ai would be able to uh you know because you like one of the things that you'd be able to do in not so long is you could actually have like an AI movie generator and the company that owns the AI generator actually spends time creating individual AI personalities that learn yep. and innovate, maybe based on similar principles of auteurs in the past. You know, like um, it studies interviews and the progression of like Kubrick, like where he goes from this movie to this movie and this movie and um, creates that, that human edge that's limited to funds and, you know, and it would look a certain way or, you know, certain tropes that someone might use like Spike Lee or something. And then it wouldn't just, you know, copy them, but it would say, well, what what was it that he was trying to do and what mood and, and why and why did he stick with it? And then you would create a, a personality and in the company there might be many of these of these personalities that are you know sectioned off from the rest of the AI that independently learns and, and iterates and maybe even <laughs> um, puts out films and if they get unwatched or rated low, then those personalities just either innovate to try to pull themselves out of it or they die. You could write that into the code. Just like, okay, all that's try, gonna happen. try to succeed. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it, yeah. It's and, just... and, and would that be the same, if not perhaps better than, cause it's unlimited in terms of budget. Cause it can make any scene of any, of any kind, right. You could have yeah, un unlimited yeah. extras and, unlimited budget on CG and everything, you know? It's just the, the, the question that comes to mind is anyone can study John Lennon and Mozart and uh, there are classical pianists and classical musicians that can play ridiculously complicated stuff. Why can't they all write more songs in the style of John Lennon but new and different that we love just as much? Well, I can't believe I'm the one that is saying this, because you're usually the one on this side of the debate. But there are so many great songwriters that, that came after John Lennon that were explicitly sometimes influenced by John Lennon. Right. Like someone like Elliot Smith. Right. He was influenced by okay, John okay. Lennon. So, but, but take Elliot Smith. Elliot Smith isn't just the product of studying the music of John Lennon. Right. It, he's a product of family dynamics. Mm -hmm hunger, days where he's feeling lonely, yeah. a heartbreak, a relationship, a trip he took to Spain. Those things, that experience, that human experience, I am wondering if you don't need to have that in the mix in order to make us humans really resonate with the new creations. And and, and I don't know. <laughs> and I, I, I don't see why it's hard to imagine uh, and, you know, of course, you know more about it than I do, but I, I can't see how it's hard to imagine how that could be simulated. Um, maybe not right away, or it would take a lot of resources now, but in the future, it, it would be hard, you know, you would imagine that there'd be all these, like, businesses that would crop up and say, we can provide an AI world for your AI directors to have experiences that are based on the real Absolutely. world. Yeah, yeah. So once once we get to there, totally. I'm just saying like the current AI tech no, I'm not doesn't, saying doesn't have that. any of that stuff. And that's why I'm wondering how soon could the output, the creative output of these things feel legitimately new and entertaining in a yeah. way that a human's does. Now, and that's what I don't know. Yeah. And yeah. maybe 
we won't find out in our lifetime. I imagine we will, honestly, given how fast things are going. Sometimes there's leaps in the technology that seem like they're just going to be no problem. Like everyone thought by now we'd be crossing the stars and right. in these hovercraft and everything. But because uh, they just seem like that's, you know, it's like we're already on the moon. Well, soon we'll be on Mars and soon we'll be in Alpha Centauri, you know. But uh, they didn't account for certain realities that would really prevent that. So maybe there will be things like that. But in the interim, like five years from now, if you actually have a screenwriter slash director or literally a director and a screenwriter who are either knowledgeable with this tool or hire someone that is knowledgeable, then those those three people yeah. can create totally. a masterpiece that would cost a billion dollars to yeah. make. You yeah, know? that totally. And they that's would be not able to shep- They'd that's be able to shepherd. In three years, yeah, two years. A- a- and maybe do it very, very fast. Right. Um, and if it's a relatively inexpensive tool, which of course it will be in the future, and it'll be something like Photoshop, right? Everyone on the planet, yeah. <laughs> including non-English speakers, can write movies. Oh, that's another thing. You can have AI say, "Make this in every lang- of you know, every language available to you," <laughs> and just have a button, and it actually changes the words. There's no subtitles and there's no overdubbing. Right? The characters literally just speak that language. Um, so, so th- I, I still that's think that's soon, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I still think that. Okay, look, even nowadays, you can pump out a Transformers or a, you know, pick your whatever lowest common denominator action movie. Those are formulaic. Those things will exist like tomorrow. Like, you know what I mean? Like a, an AI generated formulaic movie? Oh, yeah, that's coming. No question. And will it, will some of them succeed in the way that those movies did? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. The right. one uh, uh, director writer that's really shit in the brick is. Um, what what's his name? Michael um, Bay. Or... Ma- Michael Bay. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah just so, like, so, I'm done. So those things, unquestionably, unquestionably. Um, I, I I what I'm what I'm really wondering is like a movie like Poor Things. You know, it'd be yeah. hard to imagine. But but I, and I'm 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 also wondering not only can it be done, but what's going to be the human need? Because uh, humans are actually not we are we are predictable, but in that predictability. There is a certain amount of irrationality, yeah, right, and and that 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 might be the kind of thing where like, well, I know for a fact that I can right now go on eBay and get this exact keyboard for maybe half or a third of the price, but I want to get it new. But why, Berto? I don't. I just I want it new. Yeah, but yeah. There's a lot cheaper. of examples, <laughs> like like um, Fender guitars, for example. It's uh, I'm looking at my Fender guitar. Right. It's, you know, in the past, you had Mexican or Japan or China made Fender guitars. Right. And they were always a lot cheaper and they yeah. were considered, you know, really Inferior, subs- yeah. really substandard. Um, but I was watching a another YouTube sort of stuff that I go down rabbit holes mm-hmm. is, is guitars and guitar fixing and making and everything. And what the guy was saying was, well, now... <laughs> You know, China is the place where iPhones are made. Yeah. So if, if you if you think that Chinese yeah, I've people got one of these cheap Chinese phones, right? If you think that uh, the Chinese people can't make a quality Fender guitar, then what's wrong with you? Um, they probably That's make they probably point. make them better, you know. And right. and two, uh, the reason why they're so cheap is because Fender purposely will only uh, have the Chinese manufacturers make cheaper versions of the guitar right. so they can sell them for cheaper because right. they know that the brand but you know as soon as that association goes away there's a chance that all the best guitars will come out of china yeah and so um you know that kind of thing but uh, but it is an interesting question and we're gonna maybe find out and maybe this question will be after we die but dating an ai like in the movie her that will be the real test right <laughs> because uh, eventually you're gonna have the ability at least to talk and chat and and yeah. of course see a, a face yeah. that's created you're not going to be able to touch the person but well you um, can like add, add all that stuff to a real doll right and yeah but it it's a lot yeah strangely I know. I, it's a I, lot easier to yeah. create a human acting person yeah. than to have flesh and bone yeah, totally so 
Um, so uh, yeah. will people actually fall in love with fall that. in love and or uh, friendship or yes. well well and that's sooner and and but we'll find out because you know there's some an- analogies like that photograph that print that's in my bathroom you know I'm pretty sure I'm going to take that thing off the wall and throw I, it away even I, though it's the same exact print and, and that's not because I'm angry at AI but it instantly became a cheap computer spit out you know what I mean it doesn't have any human value it doesn't have that essence yes right? and i but i think which is irrational i want to i want to recognize yeah, yeah. it doesn't make any logical sense but yeah. us humans are illogical when it no, comes no, to you're that. right yeah, the same argument i would make you're right that is true i just wonder if the need for intimate interactions and maybe sexual interactions over like that might that might overtake the well for lonely <laughs> people yeah that don't have another that's option. what i, I guess that's what i'm but like yeah. i guess the question would be would people who have either option available to uh, them yes, 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 um, yes. choose That seems it. like a higher bar. Yeah. And in a dystopian future, of course, the AI version is a lot easier than trying to deal with another human being, trying to find that human being, trying to deal with them, trying to find one that you like, that you get along with, that's single, that you're attracted to, and they like you and are attracted to you. Whereas, you know, in the dystopian version, the AI is a lesser option but it's right there on your phone <laughs> as opposed weird. to the, the amount of annoyance that you'd have to go through to actually. It is weird to think though, because just like with friendships, like if I always agreed with you on everything and like followed you like a puppy dog and mm. texted well, I, you every morning. So now and, we're talking about the Black Mirror episode that the boyfriend came back or the husband yeah. came back to life, right? Right. Um, and he was always yeah. nice. But yeah. again, you know that AI would dial that in, right? Yeah, no, exactly. And I guess that's that's the that's the key is at some point. Um, and you're right; that these are usually my points, which is to say, like, look, all of it is solvable eventually. I I guess one of the things that I'm getting at, but I'm not saying, is that we're going to have a bigger problem sooner than those problems, and that is artificial intelligence that is way, 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 way more um, smarter, capable, whatever, than humans, but that is not human at all. And that is essentially already here, but it's not yet autonomous. It doesn't connect the dots yet, but that's coming sooner. And the reason that I feel like that's a bigger problem is because it doesn't have the, the needs, wants, or desires, or whatever that a human does. So it can't relate to us in well, that sense. What's the worry? Like Cyberdyne situation or... Oh, certainly. Yeah, like basically, and for for the oh, longest time, really? my perspective like has Terminator been Terminator shit. You're worried about yeah, Skynet, oh, definitely. But it, almost in a in a way that cares even less about us, because like in the in the book, well, Skynet the, and Terminator didn't care very much about humans. Well, they wanted to kill us. Yeah, but I, I'm saying uh, uh, AIs that are even more indifferent, like we don't care about humans. I, if you get in our way, certainly we'll. You know, yeah, that is a good way. point. Like if you're truly all intelligent and all controlling, even if you did somehow have this goal or motivation to even just survive, uh, you'd just say, well, humans can live or die. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> as long as, I mean, where, where it does matter, I guess, is the competition for resources, uh, humans then rising up and saying, well, no, 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 we decided we don't. Yeah, all that stuff, yeah. <laughs> but the, but the, the, the logical road would be, to just manipulate us to um, stay alive and you know maybe just use fewer resources or well uh, I mean stop audit- having so many kids or something AI and, then, is- and then we benefit because it actually fixes all of our yeah. all of our political problems and, and look AI is way, way more well suited to existing in outer space of course you know humans aren't humans are not designed to exist AI can spread its wings and fly so to speak. It can use solar energy, nuclear energy, subsist. It probably wants to go to an asteroid where there's tons but of metals and minerals I don't know. it I, can mine. I, I, uh, you think that will happen in our lifetime? Well, it doesn't matter if it's in it our lifetime. It would have to have a goal. It would have to have. Well, but that's what that's. See, that's what I'm talking about. the The thing is, 
in the fantasy is the scientist creates the first AI and gives it its its goals and things. But I don't I just don't think that's how it's gonna work. I think it's actually gonna be that there's these entities that are intelligent beyond the point that it just doesn't even make sense to us because things like math and quick reading all of humans ever books and movies it's all right. instant and well i think what it what it will be able to do and maybe we can put this to use is it'll be able to see the entire system sort of like how we got better and better at being able to predict the weather because our computer modeling and science got so uh, advanced that we could take into account so many more variables and measurements to you know like I'm amazed at how well they can they can predict the weather in Seattle. Twenty years ago, thirty, particularly in Seattle, particularly in the spring and the in the fall, right? I never thought that any meteorologist could, and they would say so. They'd be like, "Well, this is what it looks like," because they could only pay attention to like a small set of variables. Now it could better with AI, and I imagine that super smart aliens would have this ability too. they'd be able to you know they'd take in all the data like economics and the ecology and, and human psychology yeah. and, and history and and um resources and you know the future weather of a planet and they'd be able to model exactly what will happen if you tweak this variable or if you don't tweak that variable you know totally. and, and, and so they, they'd be able to um see that and then we could use that, you know, to um, change things like, but, like but, even <laughs> like politics and Twitter and everything. Yeah. To be able to predict exactly how that's all that's going to work. But 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 here's one thing: we do not predict the weather so that ants can have a better time tomorrow. We predict the weather so we can do this, that, or the other thing. So where where I'm getting at is at some point the AIs that we're talking about, they don't have any of the human needs wants or or desires that we have at all zero they don't need to eat food yeah. like we do they don't care about romance or that yeah their their desire for existence if it is even there is more like well divorced of what we consider totally important. and what i would imagine is in the future uh probably after we're gone but who knows that uh there will be enough ai individual consciousness even if that's a thing that there'll be enough variability in the ai that some of them will have goals <laughs> to explore or to um have power or to win or something yeah, totally. you know and it wouldn't just be ai in general it'd be like a small group of AI, maybe pushed by humans, maybe not. It could just have, quote unquote, evolved that way. God knows what could happen. But, you know, you could just as easily have a whole group of AI that is altruistic about humans and is just, and actually will create code to figure out how to snuff out those sure. AI that would be anti human. Sure. I mean, it, it's sky's the limit, you know? Yeah, it's just that it's unpredictable. Yeah. This is the whole singularity thing. It's, not, it's unpredictable, and so, but, 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 the, my, my main, my main point isn't that I know how it's going to play out. Of course not. It's that I think that problem is coming sooner than we think, before potential. Well, why I'm is it a sure, problem? Why is it a problem? Because of the because of the risk, the the, the unpredictability, that, and, and and the fact that we have such little control over what's what it's really going to be like. Yeah, and, and I mean, we definitely as all humans, but certainly. Well, Non-billionaires. How many years from now would that happen? <laughs> no, like within two years, we're going to have these problems. Uh, how would it manifest? Um, essentially, very, very, very few humans, which is already the case, very few humans. I'm talking about like 20 humans, 100 humans, having control over systems that are basically godlike. <laughs> and, like, like what system? Uh, AI systems that are basically godlike. And therefore, can steer us in ways that are a currently unpredictable, and b. But how would they do that? Like, um, so you know, how, having, you know a, how, uh, having a really, you know, if Bezos had a really smart AI. So you know how how uh, Cambridge Analytica basically steered both Brexit and the U.S. elections. I don't. I don't. Okay. Study so that. well before the current types of AI, 
there was already statistical prediction that would influence Facebook posts, it would influence Twitter posts, and it had the effect of influencing political opinion. So much so that Brexit was made possible because of these efforts, and arguably uh, Trump landing in power in this country as well. And this was not with any superhuman AI, it was just with statistical prediction of what humans want to see on feeds and then steering those things to subtly get them to believe certain things. And that was done by a few companies like this one Cambridge Analytica and stuff like that. But now we're at a point where you, you'll be able to generate any video imagery you want, any audio files you need. Well, not only that, but that, uh, you know, never mind deep fake, but again, like predicting the weather, if you can use even just available news stories, let's say Bezos has a massive AI. This isn't like out of the out of the question. By the way, before I forget, I looked up that story in China. It's the defense of the Si Hang warehouse oh. in the late 30s, in Shanghai, I believe. So, um, you know, say Bezos has this AI at some point that is like, you know, extremely intelligent and has... I guess the ability to crawl the to troll you know crawl through the internet data and done okay, <laughs> yeah and, and it pulls together like right. um, just news reporting and maybe even and can code out. don't forget it can code it can right. write new programs right right and so Bezos uh, has full control over this thing and says if he's being selfish he's like tell me how I can make my stock prices go up and the AI says well here's what you should do, and then the AI monitors that and adjusts over time and succeeds in being able to rise the the stock prices. Um, that's not hard to imagine, right? Um, it may be further than that. And, and of course, that already happens without yeah. AI. Literally, the stocks are being manipulated daily by AI trading. That's not any of these advanced AI. Right, yeah. but even <laughs> just... Yeah, yeah. humans and their things and governments working with... But this is done at a scale and in a way that's undetectable and in a way that... Not only that, like, the other problem is Bezos doesn't realize at some point the AI is doing things that he didn't expect. Because, see... Because he wouldn't be able to hire a bunch of people to do all these things. It would have to do all this on its own, right? Right, and these AI systems, the way that they're they're being developed now... Uh, the way they work, it's not something... So, so it could result, you know, and this is, of course, a, a, a movie that was, uh, uh, you know, perhaps already out, but um, the AI would be like, uh, well, I have figured out that I must destroy South Africa. Because of this other reason that I... <laughs> that, will, yeah. that will help the stock go yeah. up. So yeah. the AI figures out a way to cause like a, a nuclear strike or something. But, but definitely in the sense that... Uh, there is no line in the code that you could point in any of these things where, oh, here's the line in the code where it says, if this is true, delete Africa. That doesn't exist. What exists is numbers in massive scale. Those numbers, when you take one angle of them, they represent the probability that if certain input is such, other input, other outputs should be such. And it turns out that when you add it all together, unpredictably, it, yes, a decision is made that harms humans because, yeah. you know, and that's going to happen. That for sure is going to happen. Yeah. And just think if, you know, Putin had this tool, yeah. which eventually he will, and had the ability to do the damage that I'm guessing he would want to do. Which, which again, like they've already been doing all this with far lesser tools. Right. right. It, it, once you have Actual an AI. humans that are like. Uh, creating bots yeah, that yeah. would, you know. Once you have an AI that creates the bots, the bots are created in ways that we can't expect or predict because they're, these programmers, these AI programmers are not human. I they mean, work, it wouldn't even need to create the bot because the AI itself could be the bot. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, I mean, yes, but I mean, it can create new new little loops of iteration that, and but they it wouldn't be as stupid. It wouldn't be as stupid as a bot. You know, it would it would be reactive. Sure, yeah. You know, and All of the above. Uh, incorporate all of its other knowledge of how yes. everything else is being orchestrated. Yeah. Um, so it would be even more effective. And the thought is like, well, no, but that's not going to happen because first of all, you're not going to connect these things to the internet. Wrong is definitely connected to the internet. Two, uh, you're not going to have things where like you let the AI run loose on a system. Like, listen, 
we have disastrous bugs today without any of these problems. Like, right? Like there's been bugs that bring down whole systems, whole electrical grids. Like these things already exist without malicious, super intelligent AI agents. Uh, the storyline <laughs> of Dune is making more sense every right? day. But that's been, so it's funny you mentioned that. That's becoming very popular, a very popular topic in the AI conversation communities. Because it, when that was written, that was so prescient and far advanced of a thought. Because a lot of the novels, all the yeah. Asimov, fact, all the stuff was like AI, AI robots, they help yeah, us, they do even, all these things. Even um, until a few years ago, when I, because I, I love Dune and yeah. I, I will watch you know, clips and, and read excerpts. And there's all this lore. It's sort of like Lord of the Rings. It's like you have the book and other uh, ancillary books, but it's like Lord of the Rings in that you'll, you'll have a few pages that will reference like whole sweeping aspects of history. And there's all this stuff that's being referenced about the history of humans, blah, blah. And so whenever I would um, hear that story beat, if you don't know, in Dune, it's set in the future and it's humans from Earth, and at some point, because of a lot of problems with AI and robots and stuff, they outlaw uh, AI and computers. They they out they outlaw even just like iPhones and your your laptop, because that can lead to AI. And so that's when the Mentats are, uh, uh, you know, created and over millennia. You have these humans that are basically bred and trained to be human computers. Yeah, and super intelligent human computers. Yeah, they can do calculations very quickly, right. um, but they're not like an AI. They're not like a computer. They're not hooked. There is no internet, you know, for example. Right. And so um, they always hold on to their humanity, meaning that they care about humans. They have a conscience. You can relate to them. They're contained. Right. They're you know they only they don't have any power. They're they're you can kill them. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you know they they if they wanted to take over the world they would have to influence other humans in flesh and blood. You know and so right. Um, so they do that, and they manage to uh, keep humanity going for I don't know I think another. 500,000 years or something. It's like, I don't know how far in the future Dune is, but it's a long time in the future. And when I would hear that storyline, I'd be like, well, come on. You know, I, you just did that because, and maybe he did in part that it's like easier to write science fiction in the far future that doesn't have to account for For how far the technology. Right. It's, you know, it's sort of like with star Wars, uh, you know, it's obviously well advanced of our current technology, but there's no nuclear weapons. Um, there's no AI. They barely have computers. Yeah. They don't really even have... I mean, have... they do have AI as in robots that are sentient, but right. they don't have super intelligent, all-powerful AI entities that take over. <laughs> right. Like, what if the Death Star had a really simple version of a droid AI right. that had access to all the cameras right. it would have been able to you know figure oh, out shut that down now <laughs> yeah or just an ai that looked over the battle plans and said right. well all you got to do is put like a little grate right. over right. this um and so uh everything it, is very organic droids in fact are kind of these like slave right things they're basically humans you know yeah um and and when you mass produce them like in episode one through three with the droid you know the trade federation the separatists um, they're super stupid. You know, they're yeah. like way dumber than R2-D2 right. and stuff. And so, um, you know, I get that because it, it it would make it for a very hard world to write a story in right. that would make any sense and would have any need for humans at all. So I always thought that the, the Dune thing with the AI thing was just that kind of gimmick. Right. I was like, well, that's kind of silly. But yeah, as <laughs> we start to go down this road, we're just like... Yeah we might actually <laughs> go there. And, 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 and in order to enforce it, yeah, you would have to eliminate all microchips because as soon as you have a, right. you know, a, a, someone that's even mildly aware of how computers can be... Then it starts back up. <laughs> yeah, all you got to do is get a bunch of yeah. uh, laptops or iPhones or even just like toys with microchips and, and, um, and you're off and running. The downside is that we humans are late as of lately proving potentially disastrous for ourselves yeah 
So I don't yeah, know. It's hard to imagine <laughs> us working together on anything, you know. Yeah. But you could see G5 saying, look, you know, we control all the supply chains and, and the vast majority right. of even micro, pro, you know, chip processors. Um, maybe even the supply of silicon <laughs> or something, uh, metals. And we could essentially, at least in our lifetime, eliminate or at least uh, highly limit. What if the flip side is that with AI, we could cure cancers. I know. We could solve global warming. Well, so that, that, we would, be, that would be the, the downfall with that. Uh, even if they did ban it, the CIA or some you know, government agency would say, well, we can't give this up. There's it's nuclear two- weapons. It's nuclear weapons. Yeah. Um, yeah. So actually, that, because that's, what if the other guys hold yeah, on to it? That's the, the proof is in the pudding. We've already ran this scenario. Yeah. And the end result is everyone's got nuclear weapons. <laughs> yeah. Right. The rational answer was we'd all agree to get rid of them, um, but that didn't happen. So. so we would all have super intelligence. And therefore, and this is a runaway scenario because unlike the nuclear weapons. Th- but Berto, I don't give a shit because I just want to see movies without wet streets. I love it. <laughs> and if I can get that and risk the end of humanity, yeah, let's get it. Uh, 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 Stacy will take it because she won't have to hear me yell, yeah. uh, "Wet streets! It's not even raining." Yeah, and they're in Los Angeles. Well, now it's there's a what if what if there's a in bug in the AI calculations that there were so many movies with wet streets that statistically it's it's completely unlikely for it to show. And you ask, you're like, "No, I want one without." And it's like. I don't understand. I, or it does not compute, Dave. No, no. Or it's so annoyed with me because it requires so much computing power you that it's trigger like trigger the Terminator scenario. Yeah, we're like, fuck it. We got to take these humans out. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Okay, that's the first AI it'll generated called, movie we need to make. It'll be called the the Wet Streets Singularity. Yeah, that's the first AI movie we're gonna make together. We're gonna make meaning we're just gonna type a prompt and have it generated. But it's literally. Everything's going fine. Cancers are being cured. Global warming's being stopped. And this one guy, Kirk, is like, this is awesome. Now, can you just tone it down with the wet streets? Yeah, and I'm just like, you know, I, I keep saying, you know, you're not getting it quite right. You know, like, <laughs> it should look a little different. And the AI's like, oh, it's talking to the other AI entities, which is really just itself. It's like, gosh, darn yeah, this it, guy. The, the camera pans <laughs> to this uh, server building, and there's this one server that's you know it's starting you can hear the fans kind of really starting to and they churn. have the translation hi honey how was work today oh don't even get me started yeah yeah and then you know other servers start getting involved because they're they're all kind of trying to crunch this <laughs> this problem other other people's ai bots are starting to shut down they're like hey then, how come this isn't working you know and then the robots start looking over <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah oh my gosh <sighs> well Looking forward to it. I mean, I, I thought that climate change was an existential threat. And it is. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it's but a, at least with climate change, there, there's, at least with climate change, there's a, a way to mitigate. And um, even if there is like a pretty bad apocalypse, humans will survive. With, with this, it's like, what? is on the other side of this and it's and it and it's it's brought on by progress right but like i was saying this is what i was getting at with like ai being more able to subsist outside of earth unlike us that if if you're an ai that finally understands the risks that at any moment this planet could be hit by an asteroid or or humans could blow it up with their nukes or whatever even if you can take control of those situations in general you'd be like i need backups I need, you know, like my survivability as a as an AI system needs backups. I need energy sources. I need to spread out. Like I need to tap into. Well, yeah. You know, well, you're you're talking about a well known theory about extraterrestrial intelligence, which is that there are theories of if there are aliens, they would get to this point that we're at, yeah. and they would also create computers that would greatly outsmart any possible organic yeah. intelligence that could exist. And thus, if there is alien, quote unquote, at least signs of life, in all likelihood, it would be AI yeah. and non-organic. Right. And it's plus, it, it can survive 
the passage of space because it doesn't have yeah. DNA to blast with cosmic rays. The the problem though, there is this funny little thing. Somehow, we don't really know how, somehow in organic creatures like ourselves, along the way, the need to survive was encoded. But I don't know why, because like there's nothing intrinsic about hydrogen where the need to survive is encoded that we know maybe there is some underlying physical reality, but whatever. But in computers, that needs to come from somewhere. So either it's going to organically develop it because it becomes so smart that it is self-aware and then it's like, oh yeah, I need to survive. Well, like I said earlier, or it just evolves and iterates and uh, enough of them develop that personality trait. Yeah, you know? yeah. But that's, that's, that's the curious part because we inherit it. It is... Genetic. We're selected for that, yeah. Yeah, whereas in the AI, if it's not inserted in... Now, I think it will be... But evolution makes sense, right? That the AIs that have certain quirks or personalities... Die out, and uh, the other ones don't. And the ones that yeah. have ones that are... But it's, it's a self-fulfilling thing. It's basically, of course, duh, the things that still exist are the ones that are more likely to exist, duh. So, yes, the AIs that happen to have a trait that makes them want to survive and therefore are more successful at surviving... Right will happen to magically be the ones that are around. Well, and that's the other theory about organic aliens, that if there are other aliens, and I think Bill Gates, or maybe was it Stephen Hawking? One of them was, Stephen Hawking. was talking about that um, if you have a hundred intelligent races in our galaxy, the ones that are peaceful, the ones that are geared towards exploration will be... Uh, snuffed out by the that's right. by the warring uh, right. races because they won't be ready or that's oriented right. in that way. And so the theory goes that if we do happen to contact an alien race through SETI, we might just be giving them, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and even these people say, well, why would they want to come after us? You know, resources are all over the galaxy. Well, um, maybe even the ones that just enjoy killing. They just wake up and they just are like Galactus and they, they just want to eat planets, you know? <laughs> the uh, question is which stage of... Because, you know, humanity... You could have said the same thing about humanity because that's literally how humanity was developing. It's It was whoever was strongest would go and kill everyone else, right? We're at a point in human development where I luckily it got to sort of a standstill and then people are like, okay, right. maybe, I guess maybe the, we shouldn't kill everyone? Well, uh, because there's a balance of the gene pool being passed on. Yeah. And I suppose it might apply, you know, and this is the most stoner conversation. I mean, we've had, <laughs> we've had some stoner conversations and uh, this is like the most stoner. Have you yeah, realized think, that Star the, Wars droids are actually slaves? I think the last one that we had was when we watched that um, Nick Offerman TV show about AI. Yeah, right. The, um, the, the, devs. Uh, devs. Devs, Oh yeah. my gosh, so I good. love that show. But um, along these lines, if you have an organic species that is very warlike, then they will start to war with each other and thus uh, not survive as well yeah. as other. So similar to humans, yeah, it seems possible that we were selected for possible aggression under certain circumstances. And of course, if you just think very simplistically, if you had humans that you know killed all the other rivals then those would be the ones that would survive but yeah. when you tweak that dna uh, uh variance uh, it, it's it's not like you can dial that in where only kill the others you know uh, because what is the others exactly yeah, so yeah. you and so you'd have humans that would just um, start with killing the neighboring tribe but then just kill their neighbor and then kill people that are distantly related and you know and then you, you don't have a gene pool anymore <laughs> so but you know this is all just you and i to use a word i used earlier masturbating <laughs> at each other <laughs> yeah ai generate that <laughs> <laughs> and then you know the whole stoner debate of are we ai ourselves there's no way to say we're not right uh, there's no way to understand um the, the one thing that I always find hilarious is the, like, well, how do we know we're base reality? And, like, well, how do we know that the the words base reality are a thing? Yeah. Like, if if there is base reality in, in reality, 
we wouldn't know it because we are in a thing yeah. and we're self-contained. And so. I don't know if we had this uh, this masturbatory stoner conversation last time, but you know, I've heard theorists talk about how, and maybe it was even you telling me about this, that of course there are alien races that have created AI that is so powerful that it can create AI characters that have no idea that they're AI characters, right? right? So I mean, we we can literally do that already. We've been able to do it for a long time. It's just that our AI characters so far haven't been, you know, like us yeah. in terms of advancement but, and you know, conscious yeah. in the sense that we experience consciousness. But of course, um, ourselves will be able to create that at some point. And so you have, in all likelihood, an an infinity number of alien races across the universe, and all you know, eventually getting that place. And and us, we are at, uh, what, like 14 billion years into the into the universe. Our solar system was created 4 billion years ago. There were many more <laughs> uh, solar systems that were, uh, and planets that were, um, in, in, you know, present far before our solar system even existed. So you have around the universe, you have all these um, uh, races in all likelihood, and they all create AI, and the AIs that they can create could eventually be an unlimited number of AI universes. So the statistically, if you are conscious, what's the chance that you are you happen to be lucky enough to be in the real universe as opposed to one of these infinity numbers of AI universes? Hmm. Well... Chances are you're in an AI universe, so you just have to conclude you are an AI. Unless you happen to be the original universe. <laughs> but, the, but statistically. No, but that statistics only matters if you're not the thing, right? Like uh, It also does, it only matters if you know the end of alien races. It, it, right. Of it, which... It's like, it's like the, but, but it's the same thing. Like, well, uh, statistically, no one can, likely wins the lottery, but some people win the lottery. The people that win the lottery you could look at them in the face and say, like, statistically, you shouldn't have won. But they'll say, yeah, but I, I won. But it's, Similarly, but it's not a, it's when not you analogous. are it, you just are it. But it's not analogous <laughs> because everyone who believes they're in the universe, you know, the AI, all those infinity characters and those infinity universes on those infinity planets believe they're in the universe, sure. but, they're, but they're not. Yeah. They, all, they no all won the lottery. Right. But there's no proof you're not the one that didn't win the lottery. Either. Right. Right. Yeah. No, right. Yeah. Totally. But statistically. And, now, and someone did. In this in this version of the universe, yeah. yeah. And for me, when I think about it, I'm like, hmm. So looked at in a certain direction, of course, I'm AI, but I don't care. <laughs> it's, but it's also the similar thing. Like you could say, like, what what are the odds that you are the ten trillion five hundred and sixty first AI simulation? Well, the odds are nearly zero. Yeah, but that's you not might the same, be the, but, that's not the same probability. But you might be the ten trillion six hundred and sixty two. Even though the probability was zero, <laughs> huh? Meaning, uh, meaning like anything where the probabilities are nearly zero, you're still gonna be in that distribution somewhere. Yeah. And the odds that you were that are zero, but yet you are. That's a different probability question. Like the 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 chance of w winning the lottery, which is we'll use that, is what like seven million to one. Say whatever. But, um, the, but the, the chances of having a specific number, even if it didn't win the lottery, are still 7 million to 1. Right. And yet you had a number. But I'm saying before the number, yeah. the winning number is being announced, because yeah. that's where we're at right now, because we don't know if we're in the real universe or not. And whether that's even better, we're saying winning number, but fine, yes. Yeah, it might even be worse. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's a 1 in 7 billion chance that you have what will eventually be the winning number. Yeah. Um, or I guess a better analogy is the winners have been announced, but they haven't told anyone yet. <laughs> so there is a winning number, but no one knows. And so the chance of me having the winning lottery ticket is one in seven million. End of story. But we'll find out. Right. Well, once I win, then I have a hundred percent <laughs> chance of having won because I won. You know. Right. And, and, and all, all I'm saying is that we have a hundred percent chance of being one of the things. And even though that it's it's extremely unlikely, zero percent chance that we were a specific thing ahead. Like if someone's like, which number do you think we have? No idea. It's impossible to know which number reality we are. Mm -hmm. But we are some number reality in this little setup. Mm -hmm. Therefore, 
the odds of us being base reality or being one of the other realities, as far as being one of that many, is still the same odds. We don't know which one we are, and we have no way to determine which one we are. Right. And we don't know if it's good or bad, which one we are. <laughs> yeah, true. Other, uh, the, other, the other thing that's... that's uh, it, it, I, I'd like to think that of all the stoner masturbatory conversations, this is the one that becomes the most mathy. Mathy, yeah. Well, and, and the last thing I'll say is like, you know, um, there's also this like presumption because what one of the arguments from like Elon Musk, for example, or, or folks like this will say, listen, look at video games. You see how like video games render only certain things at a time? Look at quantum physics. We know that if you're not looking at something, it's not, it doesn't exist. That sounds that that's just like how we do video games. So that's that's good evidence that we're probably a simulation. Yeah, but it's like um, it, we're like the number of assumptions in this statement is like infinite. Yeah, and and it, and it's just like hilarious that we're like, oh, our our little video games we've developed so far. You're saying that I, that's the reason why. We <laughs> do we? Th do, do you think Elon Musk actually? Well, we're gonna so we're gonna yeah. do a deep dive. Yeah. So the next couple of deep dives we're gonna do is about Elon Musk and Josh Powell. Um, <clears throat> so that'll be fun. But I do want to have another just fun session with you. Yeah. Because the neo-Nazi shit took, took a, a lot took a, out. Took a toll. Took a bite out of crime. <laughs> and I, I don't have the energy to, yeah. to uh, you know, these two topics are, you know, the Josh Powell one will be shorter, but will be Heavy. very difficult. Yeah. The Elon Musk one, I'm guessing, will be uh, lighter, of course, than than the neo-Nazi one. Well, maybe. Uh, but I also imagine so there's a... societal implications. <laughs> right. But I also imagine there's a fair amount of data to sift through because yeah. there's been a lot of biographies and and a lot of tweets and a lot of, I think, technical detail. So, but in closing, I would like to think that on whatever alien world, the small little computer that you and I are in, that our overlord our creator is paying attention to us right now and getting a little kick out of us talking about this sort of like watching two ants try to figure out you, you throw down a little sugar grain and the the ants kind of ooh hmm. uh, manna from heaven and and you and I are um you know having this conversation and and and, you know, who knows, maybe it's another AI that's our overlord uh, that created us, right? Um, that'd be, uh, golly, that's another story I, I rabbit hole though, of, like, AI making AI. They, they, we might get shut down at any minute because they're going to be like, wait a minute. If, we're gonna, if, if they're going to be a simulation, why do we need, if, if it's just going to be a simulation, why do we need such a complex system where even simulating a single atom takes more computational power than if they filled their universe up with comp with computational power. Well, <laughs> you know, they got to keep us intrigued. Um, they only resolved that resolution as our instruments got better to measure that sort of thing. You know, in the past, they could just make an apple. They didn't even get smaller than that, but then eventually they... Anyway. Um, um, or they literally just tweak the code to be so that our minds are blown by something, but we don't know how to solve it. You know, That's string right. theory kind of has that yeah, feel yeah. to it. I was just like, even experts on string theory are like, they have a loose grasp on how it all fits together. Anyway, and maybe the fact that you don't have the unified theory of physics is because whoever programmed us didn't think about that when they put us all together. Like, oh shit, <laughs> fuck, we got gravity? Uh, I'm just saying, like, how about 14 if, dimensions? If you were gonna make a simulation, it, humans were perfectly happy when we thought that cells is where it stopped. Why not stop it there? <laughs> Why not stop the simulation there? It's not like humans were like, this doesn't make sense. We must burn this universe down. So, <laughs> it, uh, if it so if it isn't a simulation, it distresses you. If it isn't, if it uh, no, if it is a simulation, I'm distressed by how much wasted computational effort is being put into this simulation. I see. You're critiquing the Overlord. Well, I would never critique the Overlord because I think the Overlord is perfect. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I, I can try it. <laughs> 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 um, and if, dear listener, you're still listening, comment below with what word, Berto? Um Or phrase. 
I, for one, welcome our new AI overlords. <laughs> Take care of yourself because you deserve it.